Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is all things Vanderpump Rules, Beverly Hills, people being sued, demoted, fired, tattoos, divorces, it's a hot mess, and I am so here for it. So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's go. So let's dive into our first story, which is all about Vanderpump Rules Raquel slash Rachel Levis suing Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval for revenge, you know, P word, (laughs) revenge corn, eavesdropping and invasion of privacy. So we have the details of the lawsuit, and then we're also going to talk about how Rachel is saying that Ariana knew about her affair with Tom, and it was all for a storyline and to save her spot on the show. Now, we're going to weigh in on whether you believe her or not, and I'll let you know what I think, but I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Do you believe Rachel when she says that Ariana knew about the affair and she's just pretending to be shocked for a storyline? Put it down below. So this is from Raider Online. It says, Ariana Maddox knew about Scandival and plot saved her from chopping block. Raquel Levis charges an explosive lawsuit. We'll be going interchangeably between Raquel and Rachel. She's the same person, different personalities. It is what it is. So Ariana Maddox was allegedly aware of her boyfriend Tom Sandoval's affair months before the news of Scandival broke, and so was the rest of the Vanderpump Rules cast, at least according to Raquel Levis. RaiderOnline.com obtained Levis's explosive lawsuit filed in Los Angeles on Thursday against Maddox and Sandoval. In the documents, she claimed Maddox knew about the affair as early as fall of 2023 and desperately needed the plot twist because she was allegedly on the on the chopping block. Levis said that she began sleeping with Ariana boyfriends of nine years on or about August 10th of 2022, adding their affair continued as Sandoval's relationship with Maddox further deteriorated. The ex Vanderpump Rules star alleged that although purportedly secret, the affair was in fact well known to many cast members and and suspected by others, and she and Sandoval were not particularly discreet. She claimed Ariana was tuned into their sexual relationship with Sandoval. Levis is informed is informed and believes, and on such information and belief alleges, that Maddox knew about it as early as the fall of 2022. She charged in the lawsuit, citing that in December of 2022, Maddox scolded Raquel and Tom for being handsy in public, admonishing them to save it to save and admonishing them to save the story for season 11. Levis claimed at the time that Vanderpump's rules was facing an uncertain future as the show had grown stale. All right, I'm going to stop there and we'll get more into the, more into the article. Raquel, Rachel, stop lying. In my personal opinion, I do not think Ariana actually knew that Rachel and Tom Sandoval were having a sexual affair and that she told them to, quote, save it for season 11. I think all of that is hindsight information that has come to light. Like, for example, in hindsight, yes, the Scandival is what saved Vanderpump Rules. But do I think that Ariana knew about the affair? No. I don't think anybody really, quote, knew about the affair. I think that some people were were aware. This is what I think. I think that Sheena and Lala and people like that had their suspicions and that they didn't have confirmation, but they all felt that something weird was going on season nine, season 10 ish. And I believe them when they said, you know, we tried to talk to Ariana about it and Ariana was living in her delusional La La Land with Tom and she sort of dismissed them the way she always does. I think that is all true. You know, I don't think any of them are great enough actors to have pretended all of this. I I really don't, you know? So I think that Rachel's lawsuit, first, let me say this. I think her lawsuit in general is bogus and frivolous and needs to be dismissed and tossed all the way out. 
this is just another example of celebrities or reality stars or people with privilege, whether that privilege is money or fame or whatever you want to call it, that use the legal system just to get more money and more fame and continue their 15 minutes. Because there are people out there who genuinely suffer from revenge corn, you know, where they are doing something intimate with somebody that they love and trust, and then that person betrays them and they spread that online or on the internet or social media or with their friends. And that truly is what it is. But this doesn't seem to be that. This seems to be because I do believe the story of how Ari of how Ariana found out. The phone fell, she saw it, she flipped out, all of that stuff. I don't know how that is revenge corn. That's just me. I don't know. And as we already know, Rachel will go to court with somebody having fully on lied the same way she did to Sheena. So she's fully prepared to lie and fabricate evidence. You know, we debunked the whole black eye scar on her face situation before. So to me, uh, girl, bye. Like you're you're lying and, and you're reaching with all of this. All of this is a big, 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 big reach, okay? All right, so let's keep going. It says, Maddox in particular was reportedly on the chopping block, the docs read. In the, absence of a, in the absence of a sticky new storyline, there's every reason to believe Vanderpump Rules would have been canceled. Okay, that's fine. But that doesn't, that's the thing. Things can be correlated, but not related. Is there a correlation between Vanderpump Rules being boring and about to be canceled, and then all of a sudden Scandal happens and it saves a show. Yes, that's a correlation. But it doesn't mean that they were actually causational, meaning that they caused Scandal in order to save Vanderpump Rules. Those are two different things. Levis said Mad- Maddox was aware of the pressures of Scandal as Sandoval, and both were heavily invested financially and reputationally in the show remaining on the air. Adding, by extension, if the relationship was already on the rocks, and if Sandoval was intent on brazenly carrying out an illicit affair with another cast member, they had every incentive to leverage these salacious threads into the storyline Vanderpump Rules so desperately needed. Another reason why this doesn't make sense is because this didn't actually happen on camera. Every the whole big bombshell that happened happened when cameras were down. That's why cameras had to pick back up. So if they're saying, oh, they were all in on it and they were saving it for a storyline for the show, then how come Scandal broke when they were off season, when they weren't actually shooting for the show? Again, doesn't make any sense. Dun, 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 dun. As Raider Online r- reported, Levis sued her ex friend and former lover for revenge corn, eavesdropping and invasion of privacy on Thursday. She alleged Scandal recorded the illicit videos of her that Maddox of her that Maddox found on his phone in March of 2023 without her knowledge or consent, and Ariana distributed them and or showed them to others. Levis also expressed concern there might be more footage of her, claiming that given Sandoval's apparent practice of secretly recording their video calls, Levis has every reason to assume there are additional illicit videos and or photographs of her that she has not yet seen. This is the thing. The only grace I will give Rachel is... If it is true that Tom recorded you without your consent, then sue him. Go after him and like civil court, small claims court, girl, bye. Sue him for eavesdropping or whatever the term is for what he did to you. But to to bring in Bravo and NBC and Ariana and all of these others, because she's suing like a conglomerate of people. You know, she's suing Tom Sandoval, Ariana. And does one through 50, which means like at all, like everybody else involved. That could be Sheena, that could be Lala, that could be NBC, that could be Shed Media or Evolution Media, the production people. This is my thing. Nobody asked you to bust it open for Tom Sandoval. You did all of that on your own accord. Nobody asked you to sit up in Ariana's face and, and play like you're her friend when the entire time you're busting it open for her man. 
whether they are in a bad relationship or not does not negate the fact that you busted it open for your alleged friend's man. Doesn't negate it, okay? The only person, in my personal opinion, you should have an issue with is Tom recording you without your consent. That is it. Ariana picking up her boyfriend's phone and seeing you busting it open for him and her being shocked by that. Maybe she sent it to Sheena, maybe she didn't, but Ariana herself has said she didn't even watch the full thing. She called Sheena and told Sheena what happened. So this is my thing. Even if Ariana sent it to Sheena, and I'm not saying she did because she never said she did. I'm not saying she did. I understand that in the moment. There's no intent. And you need intent for a revenge corn. That's why it's called revenge. Because and built baked into revenge is the intent to get back at. The intent to hurt. I haven't seen this video on TMZ. I haven't seen this video on fans only. I haven't seen this video anywhere. John Q. Public has not been privy to this alleged video. So are you suing her because in the moment she saw it and she either sent it to Sheena or told Sheena that was it? You also sent your little cease and desist and Lala was like, send it to Daryl and it hadn't been spread around. So I'm confused as to your whole dis disposition distribution aspect of this. Who and where was it distributed to? We haven't seen it. It's not on any, you know what I mean? It's not on anybody's Patreon. So what are you talking about, girl? What are you talking about? Have several seats. And this is the thing, Rachel. You went to this alleged mental health facility. And again, I'm not being disrespectful about mental health by any means. But you came out claiming like you were so changed and different. And to me, you're doing the same weird, bizarre, thirsty nonsense that you were doing ever since you were exposed as the weirdo that you are when you were busting it open for Sandoval. You got up on Bethany's podcast and you base and like you single-handedly ruined Bethany's brand. If I was Bethany Frankel, I would be really pissed because you single-handedly ruined her brand. Bethany is now canceling her Rewives podcast. That's a bust. Bethany can't ever work with Bravo again because of the whole lawsuit that she did with the reality reckoning on your behalf. <laughs> so not only did you bust it open for Sandoval while you were cosplaying as Ariana's friend, but you single-handedly took down Bethany B. Because I don't know what Bethany's doing these days other than YouTube and TikTok. Shout out to that, though. I mean, she's fine. She has millions and millions and millions of dollars. She's, she's fine. Bethany is fine. But what I'm saying is... Rachel, you need to shut up and sit down and have several seats. If you want to do your podcast, do your podcast. Everybody's got to eat. That's fine. But to me, it's these lawsuits have gotten out of hand. The reality reckoning lawsuit, Brandy's lawsuit, uh, Leah McSweeney's lawsuit, you know, now Rachel's lawsuit, Nini's lawsuit was a bust. Like, it's it's gotten to be too much. It, lawsuits now are kind of punchlines and it makes me sick for people in this country that truly have been victimized and I, the only way I see Rachel as a victim is that Tom filmed her without her permission that is wrong on every single level other than that I don't see Rachel as a victim in any way, shape, or form. I'm not talking about the extremes of online bullying that has happened. That's obviously wrong. It should never go to extremes. I'm talking about in like reality, wor like world. She's not a victim by any means. And it just makes me sick in the same way she used the legal system to go against Sheena with the whole um, bogus, frivolous, you know, restraining order. That was a waste of time. It just pisses me off because there are tr truly people in this world who really have been victims of revenge corn, who really have been victims of abuse and violence and all of these things, 
who don't have the money, who don't have the resources, who don't have the support, who don't have the fame, that feels like no one would believe them and they don't have the resources to fight for themselves. And it pisses me off that people like this think that filing lawsuits is just an, it's like going to Starbucks and picking up a latte because you didn't get your way, because you're jealous other people are making money off of this scandal, because Bravo didn't give you the money you thought you wanted. You, you wanted. And that's another thing that's bogus. You said yourself on the Bethany podcast that you wanted to come back to the show, but they weren't giving you as much money as you wanted. So if you're this big old victim and they did you so dirty and all this revenge corn and eavesdropping, why did you want to come back on the show? I know for me, if I'm victimized by a per, uh, by someone or something, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. So yeah, and again, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, Rachel. I Just because you put it in a lawsuit doesn't make it the truth. I think you're lying. I think you're lying. Do I think the show was stale? Yes. Do I think Ariana could have been the chopping block? Sure. But do I think that the entire cast knew about this affair and so did Ariana and they were all planning it for season 11? No. Because this is also another thing. Ariana's lawyers, if you're listening, take some notes. I'm going to tell you right now how we know Rachel is lying through her teeth. So when everything happened, and by everything I mean, Sheena and Rachel were in New York. They had just did a press tour for Vanderpump Rules. They had just gotten done with Watch What Happens Live, right? Ariana and Tom and the rest of the crew are in L.A. Tom and the most extras, they're doing their little concert or whatever at Pump or wherever the hell it was, one of LVP's restaurants. That's when the phone falls. That's when she picks it up. And that's when everything happens. That's when she calls Sheena. And then Sheena says that that is when Rachel confirms to Sheena that she has been having a sexual affair with Tom Sandoval. And this is when Sheena, according to Rachel, allegedly punched her in the face. Riddle me this, Rachel. Why would Sheena punch you in the face if she had already known that you were having an affair with Tom off camera while you guys are not filming? So it wasn't like a moment for the TV show. Why would Ariana call Sheena? To tell her she just found a video of you busting it open for her man if she already knew it was happening off camera, off season, if it was this entire conspiracy to wait until season 11 so that they could have a storyline. That makes zero sense. So based on how your own past legal moves, based on your own past words, You have just yourself debunked your entire um, case. Because it doesn't make any sense. You can't have it both ways. You can't say Sheena punched me because I told her I was sleeping with Tom, but in the same time say everybody knew and we were all waiting for season 11. So why would she punch you in your face off camera, off season, if everybody knew? Why? And especially if you're saying Ariana said, oh, don't be so handsy in public. We're waiting for season 11 for a storyline. Then why would seeing you busting it open for Tom on his phone trigger Ariana to the point where she is fighting with him, calling production and calling Sheena? Those two scenarios cannot coexist. They cannot coexist. So based on your own version of events, based on your own past lawsuits, you're still lying. Do I think Sheena mushed you or pushed you? Sure. I'm not mad at it. I don't condone it. I'm not saying I condone violence, but I'm also a human being and I understand it. I understand. I understand the inclination to knock somebody out who did what you did to her friend and to her. 
I get the inclination. I'm not saying it's right, and I'm not saying there shouldn't be consequences, but I understand the inclination. We're all human beings. If we're being honest, we all understand it. Why would she react that way if everybody knew? And why would she react that way off season, off camera? Why would Ariana react that way off season, off camera? Doesn't make any sense. Ariana lawyers, if you need somebody to help you with your strategy, give me a call. (laughs) Because Rachel's lawsuit makes no sense. None. But I want to know what you guys think. As always, put it down below. Do you think that Rachel, again, is just being a pick me person. She has nothing else, you know, she has nothing else to do. Maybe her podcast isn't popping the way she thought it would. Do you think her lawsuit should be tossed out? I do. And, or do you think, no, you know, maybe she does have a case. Maybe it was revenge corn and eavesdropping and everything. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. I personally think it should be tossed out. I think if she's going to go after anybody, I think she should go after Tom if it is true that he actually, because again, I don't believe anything she says. He is a liar, but she's also a very scary, deep liar too. So if it is true that he recorded her without her, without her consent, then just go against him privately and say, hey, listen, this is what happened. Let's, fi- let's find a civil way to mediate this and figure out what what's what. Other than that, Rachel, go away. Have several seats. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to story number two, which is Erica Jane losing it all. So Erica Jane loses court battle and faces trial after judge denies motion to dismiss $18 million lawsuit from costume designer. Details are revealed. So I don't like to revel in the demise of anyone because I don't want that karma coming back at me. I firmly believe in this world, what you put out, you get back. So I'm not reveling in this, but I am going to report on it because I do think karma is real. So like I said, I think that this is the beginning of Erica's problems, not the end. We saw this season, it was her like redemption arc, which I was just kind of gagging over like, ugh, stop it. It it was nothing but one big advertisement for her Vegas residency and her Bet on Blonde spinoff for Bravo and NBC. So basically her entire storyline was one big commercial advertising for those shows, which I'm pretty sure both Bravo and NBC have a stake in. So that to me was kind of disgusting. Her whole position on, I want the ladies to apologize to me because I won my appeal. And it's like, again, people with money and fame and privilege using the legal system to get over on victims, on people who have less money and less access and less resources. She appealed on just to make a point. She knew she was never going to get the money back and she knew she was never going to get the earrings back. She only appealed to stick it to the victims. Like that is disgusting. But like I always said, and I'm, and I'm going to get to the details of this lawsuit. But like I always said, I think the feds are building a much deeper, bigger, rock solid case against Erica. And I do think that it's only a matter of time before they get her. But let's see what happened with this. So this is according to Reality Blurb. It says Erica Jane has just suffered what is being described as one of, as one of her worst court losses. On Tuesday, a judge denied the 52-year-old Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member's request to have a lawsuit filed against her by fashion designer Christopher Pasella or Sala dismissed, which could ultimately send her to trial. Christopher was arrested and indicted on charges of fraud after being accused of charging $787,000 to Erica's American Express card. Devastating day for Erica Girardi. To our surprise, the federal court, in a short opinion, denied her slap motion to dismiss Christopher Sala's case, 
attorney Ronald Richards revealed on Twitter on February 27th. Erica will now face a trial on allegations she falsely got her costume designer charged. Nothing is ever a lock in court. Congrats to Marco Marco. This is one of her worst losses as she won't be able to delay this trial and the facts are bad for her. In February of 2023, it was reported that Thomas Girardi, who may have used his connection to Lorenzo Robert Savage III, head of the Los Angeles office of the U.S. Secret Service, to bring charges against Christopher in regard to supposedly unauthorized charges he made to Erica's credit card in exchange for Thomas representing Lorenzo in a separate case. Oof, again, this is why I always said that these fraud people like Thomas Girardi, these quote white collar criminals, but they're just a bunch of thugs running Ponzi schemes and defrauding people, they never work in a vacuum. They that's how they are able to do it for so long and at the level that they do it. They have people in their pockets, they're in people's pockets. From, you know, Secret Service to judges to executives to police people to, um, uh, was it the FBI, his son or, or something like that? It's just crazy. And that's how they're able to get away with it. You know, if one person is corrupt, they can't do their corruption. People have to be implicit and even complicit to the corruption at this scale. So he got the head of the Los Angeles office of the U.S. Secret Service to do his dirty work, according to according to this. Christopher denied the charges against him, and ultimately, after plenty of heartache that followed Erica being refunded the money, which was payment for costumes Christopher's company, Marco Marco, made for the Real Housewives cast member, the charges were dismissed. So basically what they did was they got Marco Marco, Christopher, to create all of these costumes and, you know, jewelry and, and gowns and all of this stuff for her. And then they were like, oh, no, 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 no. He committed fraud. He didn't have the authority to make all of these charges on here. So we need to get that refunded. And then once they got the refund, they got their money back. Then all of a sudden, the charges against him were dismissed. You see so in a statement at the time, the spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office in L.A. reacted to a potential mishandling of the situation by the Secret Service, who allegedly investigated the charges without hearing Christopher's side of the story. This is where the corruption comes in. So you are the Secret Service. The Secret Service. And you don't talk to the person who is being accused of the fraud and the crime? Come on now. Come on now. You got, like, come on. That That's beyond an oversight. That's a choice. We ultimately determined that law enforcement evidence, preservation issues, undermined our ability to prosecute the case and the interests of justice supported dismissal, the statement said. Months later, Christopher sued Erica for over $18 million, alleging she and Thomas participated in an extortion scheme against him and his business and ruined his career. After the filing of Christopher's case, Erica's attorney, Evan Borges, responded to a statement. Plaintiff's claims against Erica are entirely without merit. They always say that. Oh, it's frivolous. It's meritless. Boy, bye. Independent federal prosecutors at the U.S. Attorney's Office made the decision to charge plaintiff with crimes, no one else. The notion that Erica controlled the U.S. government, or for that matter, a Fortune 100 company such as American Express, is fantasy, he stated. It's not fantasy because it's, hello, like the Secret Service said it, like it's not a fantasy, it's what happened. It's what happened. But this is a big blow to Erica. And this is the thing. I think Christopher was smart to go against her and not the U.S. government. You know, maybe throw in American Express because the problem is, and I'm a patriot. I love my country. But no system, no institution is perfect. And so I think that it's very scary to sue the U.S. government, even if one of their players, you know, the Secret Service guy, was corrupt. 
you know, because they're not they're not going to take that L. So the smartest thing to do is to sue Erica. And at the end of the day, Erica is the one who is who started the fraud. She was like, she's the crux of it. Now, do I think it was her idea? No, I think it was probably Tom Girardi's idea. I think he was like, I'm not paying back eight the eight hundred thousand dollars. That's almost close to a mil. I'm not paying all of this for your frocks and your gowns and your designers. I know someone at the Secret Service who can make this go away. Now, poor Christopher, now he's out of all of that money because, you know, he's char- making these charges. He's probably buying, you know, materials and this and that to make all of these gowns and everything. So he's out of all of that money. He's probably had to hire lawyers not to mention emotional and mental distress. If anybody has gone through anything legal when they are good people, it's very stressful. It's anxiety ridden. It's depression. It's it's a lot to, to be a part of any legal battle when you are innocent or the victim and you're fighting for something against someone so big. And then it's reputation. You know, it's not like people, and now people understand what happened, but then who are they going to believe? Thomas Girardi and Erica? Or are they going to believe a designer who's like, no, wait a minute, like you're screwing me over. So that's reputation. That's a lot. That's a lot. So cheers to Christopher. Shout out to Marco Marco, his brand. I hope they win. If it, you know, if everything turns out to be true, the allegations, I hope he wins. Do I think he's going to get the 18 million? I hope. Because I bet you Erica has it somewhere. I don't believe, and I've never believed for one second that Erica is poor or destitute or starting over in her million dollar mansion with her Range Rovers and her Birkin bags. I don't never believe that for one second. I think that there are, and then again, this is just my opinion. I think that there are a lot of offshore Swiss bank accounts even onshore accounts, looking at you, Wells Fargo, that have millions and millions of dollars. Maybe the money has been converted into art. Maybe some of it's been converted into crypto. Maybe some of it's been converted into stocks or shares. But I think the bulk of the money hasn't just disappeared. I think that they have either washed it, laundered it, converted it, hidden it. But I think it's there. And I think Erica knows how to access it. She's just riding it out until she thinks she's been, quote, vindicated enough and until she thinks that it's, it's you know, further in the past before she really starts dipping into all of it. Because I think the half of a million Wells Fargo account in Florida that she got, I think that's a drop in the ice bucket of what's really out there. I really do. But I think she's not tapping into the bulk of that money until she thinks the coast is clear. So they need to hire Sutton's financial forensics people that Sutton did for her divorce to find that money. That's what I say. But I want to know what you guys think. You know, do you think the designer has a good case? You know, from everything I've seen, this is fraud. And I do feel really bad for him. And it sucks. You know, it sucks. I've been a victim of fraud in my life and it's very gut-wrenching and scary and and all of that stuff, you know. So I my heart goes out to the victims, to all the victims. I hope they get swift vengeance and justice. So that's what I think. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. So put it down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that... Let's move on to our next story, which is all about how Kyle Richards is ruining the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Is it time for her power trip to come to an end? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's find out. So this is an article from Collider. And let's see what they have to say. And I want to know what you guys think. You know, as we go through the article and I share my thoughts, put it down below. Let me know what you think. I personally think it is kind of time for Kyle to take a bit of a pause. She's spiraling. She's bitter. 
She's not being honest. I think it might be time for her to like bow out for just like a little bit. Take a take a beat, Kyle. Take a beat. But let's see what the article says. It says, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 13 has wrapped and the reunion is on the way. Speaking of the reunion, I'm living for it. I love the part one. We'll do a recap of it later. But so be sure to like and subscribe so you, so you can watch with us. So before the start of season 13, fans were eager to see veteran housewife Kyle Richards address the news of her 26-year marriage ending due to separation from her husband, Mauricio Umansky. Similar to Erica Jane's legal troubles with her ex-husband, Tom Girardi, Erica faced criticism and scrutiny, leading her to open up about her personal life on the show. In, in the reality franchise, it's not uncommon for the seasoned cast members to encourage their fellow housewives to share their stories. Knowing it will make for compelling television and maintain the appearance of authenticity in reality TV. Despite being aware of this, Kyle Richard remained silent about her marital problems with Mauricio and her rumored romantic relationship with singer Morgan Wade. Veteran housewives like Teresa Giudice, Luanne De La Seps, and Camille Grammer are typically open about when discussing their problems, especially once they become public knowledge. Kyle has never hesitated to reveal other people's issues, but now when it comes to her struggles, she suddenly becomes tight-lipped and defensive about what information she shares. When did the housewives start acting like authorities and deciding that everyone else's personal lives should be exposed? even going as far as dropping hints to steer the conversation in that direction. During her appearance on Watch Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Erica stated, As someone who got eviscerated, I would like to see everybody get the same treatment. Will the reunion be when Kyle steps up to share some truths, or will she be let off the hook? Now, I don't think Kyle is going to share any truth, but I don't think she's going to be, but she's not being let off the hook either. Like, they've been coming for her, but she's still not being honest, okay? Point number one, Kyle Richard displays hypocrisy toward her Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member. Kyle's favorite phrase for her fellow housewives is be honest with, De with Denise Richards, Kim Richards, Lisa Vanderpump, and Erica Jane have experienced it when it comes to Kyle putting them on the spot about discussing their personal issues. Somehow, the same terminology doesn't apply to her, but she has never had any problem putting other housewives in the hot seat. During season 10 of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Denise Richards was under fire for issues regarding her marriage. Kyle had no problem repeatedly telling Denise she should be honest about the rumors. Kyle tells Denise, when things are brought up in the open and put out there, they have to be addressed in this group. Three seasons later, when Kyle is in the hot seat, she feels like the ladies are not supportive, asking her to reveal what's happening between her and Mauricio's marriage and deciding to separate. I think that is a huge thing with Kyle, her hypocrisy. 100%. It's like she wants to stir the pot. She wants to be the HBIC, but nobody can talk about her life. Nobody can talk about her marriage. Nobody can talk about her husband. And then if you do, you're not being supportive. You're coming at me. I do think it's like, I don't know if it's a personality thing. I don't know if it's like something going on in her head, but it's just very bizarre. But what I mean by that is it's almost like how Kyle treats her sisters. Like, oh, they hate me. They're so mean to me. Everybody wants to like them. And she always plays the victim in her family where it's like, well, Kyle, you're actually really mean to them. You, you called Kim an alcoholic. You know, your husband betrayed Rick Hilton in business. Like, you guys have done some shady stuff to your family. It's not like you are just like this perfect person. But she likes to villainize everybody else but she always has to be the victim. Like she thinks she's special. And if she gets any type of like normal, um, you know, feedback or suggestion or criticism, she crumbles and she can't handle it. And this is the thing. I, I agreed with Dorit when Dorit said, I know your nature and you're a punisher. And if I say anything you don't like, you're going to shut me out. And that's exactly what Kyle did. And that's exactly what Kyle does. And so I think she's, Kyle's gotten kind of bitter. 
and, and she's a little angry and it's not enjoyable to watch. Number two, Kyle Richards throws relationships under the bus for ratings. Throughout the first season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle made a shocking revelation about her sister Kim during the finale, exposing a deep family secret. This revelation that Kim was battling alcoholism su subjected her to scrutiny and constant examination in the following seasons. The tensions between the two sisters and their family members escalated, as it was not Kyle's place to disclose such personal information. Kim endured the judgment and sometimes exclusion from her fellow castmates, while Kyle received sympathy and support. This was an incredibly challenging situation for Kim, but viewers truly missed the genuine portrayal of housewives dealing with their real lives issues. Unfortunately, many veteran housewives, including Kyle, now seem to be dictating the direction of their respective shows, deciding what should and shouldn't be addressed. This approach is detrimental to the essence of reality TV. We should authentically represent the lives of each cast members, both the good and the bad. Chef's kiss, I agree 100%. Lisa Vanderpump, another former housewife, had to endure Kyle's ins ins insensitivity towards her brother's tragic death in season nine. This unfortunate incident marked the end of their friendship and Lisa's departure from the show. During a difficult period in Lisa's life, Kyle decided to hold her accountable for allegedly revealing Dorit's accusation about turning in a rescue dog to a kill, -sucher, kill shelter, which became known as Puppy Gate. It was a season filled with attacks, and Lisa's vulnerability was exploited, even by her once closest friend, who joined in on the accusations that Lisa vehemently denied. As the sole remaining original housewife on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, it is evident that Kyle is leveraging her power and believes she should be exempt from scrutiny regarding her own personal issues. If authentic authenticity pre prevails, then the same rules should apply to everyone. And I agree with that 100%. It should apply to everyone. And another reason why I think she kind of needs to be taken down a peg or two, you know, yes, the hypocrisy, yes, you know, throwing people under the bus for ratings, but also like she's not fun anymore to watch. And I don't mean because she doesn't drink because I think that's a very dangerous narrative that, oh, you don't drink, you're not fun. I don't believe that. I basically don't drink anymore and, and I'm a hoot. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like she's not fun anymore. Like she's just a downer. She's defensive. She's going after Sutton. She's no longer friends with Dorit. Like she's going after Crystal. Like I don't know what Kyle is bringing to the show anymore because it's okay to be a bone collector. It's okay to be a pot stirrer, but you have to participate in that when it's your turn. Turnabout is fair play. So it's fine to be a pot star. It's po fine to do what you got to do. Hold your diamond. Get the ratings. Do you boo-boo. But, but when it becomes your turn, if you don't participate in sharing what's going on in your life, then that's when we start to disconnect from you and to disconnect from the show. She's also, just like I said, she's not fun to watch. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I don't get enjoyment out of watching her on the show to be honest with you i prefer watching ding dong to read and that says a lot that says a lot i think she's in a bad place i think that she's not happy and i think she needs to take some time to really deal with herself and if she does come back she needs to come back being open and honest and she needs to come back with better energy because right now it's just debbie downer wah 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 you know what I'm saying? It's too much. And she's on an island. Like Barbara said, Kyle is afraid of Erica. If anyone, shout out to Barbara. Barbara said, Kyle is afraid of Erica. If anyone else would have made that statement that Erica made on Watch Happens Live, they would never have, um, never have, never heard the end of it from Kyle. Right. And that's the thing. Kyle knows she doesn't have any more allies. So it's not that I think, and that's, and shout out to Barbara. Hey, sweetheart. And shout out to Chocolate Chunks. Thank you for, for being a member. JJ Makeup Obsession. Irene. Tay Tay. What's up, sweetheart? Shout out to everybody in the chat box. So it's not that I think she's afraid of Erica. I think that Kyle knows that she doesn't have anybody else. She doesn't have any more allies. She's beefing with Dorit. You know, her and Garcelle have never been particularly close. 
She's always beef with Crystal. She's beefing with Sutton. Anne Marie was a flop. She doesn't have any more allies. So I agree with you. I think that if Kyle still had allies and still felt that she was, you know, the head BIC in charge, she would have given it to Erica for days. But even she knows she doesn't have anybody else. You know? She doesn't have anybody else. And so I think that, and I also think that her um, saying, oh, you know, Erica is like a real friend and I can trust her. That was also subliminal digs to Dorit. It was, oh, it's twofold. One, I think that Kyle knows she doesn't have anybody. And two, I think it was her way of jagging Dorit. Because since when would Dorit, would Erica be the one going to Kyle to talk about the divorce, you know, on the season finale? That should have been Dorit. Dorit would have been the one talking to Kyle about it. But it's Erica? Come on now. And now all of a sudden, Erica is so close and she's so real and I can trust her and we're such good friends. Even Erica was like, uh, thank you. But that's not really true. You know what I mean? Er even Erica was like, this is weird. And I know you're saying this because you're trying to low-key jab at Dorit. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so you had a group of friends and two, two closest have a falling out. And the third one, who's always with them, the head one is now, oh my God, you're so amazing. You're such a good friend. You're so loyal. You can trust, I can trust you. You're my bestie in front of the other one. It's like, they're, she's trying to jab at her. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I want to know what you guys think. Is it time for Kyle to just bow out you know her time is up we get it you just need to kind of like take several seats and let it go girl so put it down below let me know what you guys think and as always be sure to like subscribe and share so with that let's move on to our next story so i this to me this is another pr fail nightmare of them trying to convince us that Kyle and Morgan Wade are actually in a romantic relationship. This to me just screams desperate and thirsty and trying to convince us this is real. And this is a huge fail to me. Okay. So Kyle gets a cowgirl hat tattoo amid rumored romance with country singer Morgan Wade. Yikes. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. So everybody, when Kyle gets her new tattoo and it's a cowboy hat, the first thing everybody thinks is, oh, this must be a tattoo for Morgan. Morgan is a country singer. She's a country gal. This must be a tattoo for Morgan. No, what I think is going on, and I'm going to tell you what I think the tattoo is really about, is like I said before, Morgan and Kyle are in this PR relationship. Morgan's team wanted, you know, the followers, the money, all of that stuff. Make Morgan a star. I think Kyle was going through it. She wanted a storyline. She wanted to get Mauricio's attention and all of that, right? And now that Mauricio, I think, is sort of... Because I do think the separation was Kyle's idea. But I think to continue the separation is Mauricio's idea. Like, I think that if Kyle had it her way, her and Mo would be back together. And I think that she's now kind of spiraling even more because it's like, wait a minute, I was going through something. I wanted a change in my marriage, but I didn't actually ever want to get divorced. Right? But Mauricio is kind of like, wait a minute, I can, quote, cheat and not get in trouble. And I might be able to, like, be free. Hey, I'm just going to continue with the separation. Let's, like, ride it on to the cows come home. And I'll get into that. But first, I'm going to tell you what I think this cowboy hat is really about. And I think that they're just using it. And by they, I mean Kyle's PR team and Morgan's PR team to sort of do what they always do. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Kyle and Morgan are together. I think the reason why she got the hat isn't it because Morgan is a country singer, but because she's obsessed with that hat store, Kimo Sabe. 
You know, that's been her whole personality for years. Prior to Morgan, Kyle was always spotted with a hat. She's always wearing a cowboy hat. She goes to Aspen, she gets these hats. You know, that's the whole spot of the infamous Tequila Gate with Lisa Renna and Kathy Hilton. You know, she goes and does the hats. She bought Rihanna a hat, you know, an $895 hat in Aspen, you know, at, key, at her favorite store. So what I think they're doing is they're running out of fodder. They're running out of stuff that we would care about, right? Like when they tried to separate publicly, when Morgan wiped her whole IG and when Kyle was wearing the Umansky jacket and when, um, you know, Kyle was basically like, Morgan's just one chick I text. She's, we're really not that close. She's in a group of friends on Jeff Lewis. They were afraid that they were going to face all this backlash because then everyone's like, oh, are they fighting? Are they no longer together? And Morgan has this upcoming tour with Alanis Morissette and putting out new music. I think the powers that be got scared that as quickly as we made these people into stars, that could easily go south. And I think that they were scared of the backlash. And that's why Morgan was in her Instagram stories being like, we're not fighting. Everything's okay. And then all of a sudden they're spotted together again, you know, spotted at, you know, watch what happens live. And she's touching her butt and, you know, spotted at dinners and all this stuff, which clearly they called the paparazzi themselves. And so I think they're running out of stunts. They're running out of fodder for us to talk about. So it's like, well, let's go back to the tattoos because that's a whole thing. And so I think Kyle was like, well, I'll get a tattoo of a, of a cowboy hat because I love Kimo Sabe. And then we can just put it out there. It's because of like the Morgan thing, you know? And to me, this is like, stop playing in our faces again. We're not stupid. Kyle got the tattoo because she loves Kimo Sabe and she loves being a hat, wearing the hat. But the way their publicists will plant the seed in the media is to keep their whole relationship going, you know, speculation, to give Kyle a storyline for next season, to try and get more attention from Mauricio that he's not giving her. It's like, stop, we see through the BS, you know? And I'm sure in a week, Kyle's gonna be like, oh my God, no, like this hat had nothing to do with Morgan. It was because I love Kimo Sabe, like the press, it's the media. The media is the people making us, you know, blah, 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 like stop. And then she was on her Amazon Live being like, Oh, no, like the whole Dumas, because remember, there was like the whole thing in Dumas that was like, oh, Kyle and Morgan are going to debut their relationship on the cover of a magazine, some sexy spread or whatever that crap it was. It was like country singer meets reality star going public. It's official. And Kyle on our Amazon Live was like, no, that's not us. That's not true. Like, I don't know who that is, but it isn't us. Now. Do I think she's lying or telling the truth? I don't know. Do I think their PR, their PR camps planted that in Dumas? Probably. I'm of the mind that 98% of what we see about Kyle and Morgan in the press is planted by Kyle and Morgan's team. Like, honestly, that's what I think. I think that the, the people calling Backgrid, and Backgrid is the paparazzi that takes the photos of them, is them. So everything we're seeing, oh, the tattoo, oh, the Dumas post, I think it's all their PR teams giving us content, giving us fodder. So now all of a sudden, she has a cowboy hat tattoo. Girl, bye. Mark my words, if somebody asks her about the tattoo, all of a sudden it's going to be because she's obsessed with Kimo Sabe. And she's always worn hats forever. And it's just been her thing. And she's always worn cowboy hats, which I agree. She has always worn cowboy hats. And I do think it's because of Kimo Sabe, Kimo Sabe, whatever the hell the, the store is called. But I think she strategically got that. And I think her PR people strategically planted that she gets a cowgirl hat tattoo and connecting it to Morgan being a country singer. You get it? It's enough plausible deniability, but it's giving us fodder. It's giving us content. So that's what I think is going on with them. But let's go on to a little bit more of the nitty gritty and what Kyle has to say. So this is from Reality Blurb. It says, Kyle Richards is explaining why she waited to discuss her separation from Mauricio Umansky until the end of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills 
season 13. During an appearance earlier this week after Mauricio was seen chatting about their split with their daughters in the trailer for the second season of the Netflix series Buying Beverly Hills, Kyle shared why she didn't open up about their breakup earlier as she also revealed whether she and Mauricio have spoken about moving into new homes and dating other people. The whole thing has been really hard, Kyle admitted, of sharing her marital hardships on camera during a February 29th appearance on Amazon Live. According to Kyle, she didn't open up about her marriage issues with Mauricio earlier in the season because the alleged leaked story wasn't shared with people until after filming wrapped. We were done filming and the story came out and then the Netflix cameras happened to be in Aspen so they ended up filming us talking about it. She revealed giving a nod to scenes that will be featured on Buying Beverly Hills season two. Obviously, Bravo's been following my life for 13 years. It's not like we can film we can film that scene and then I don't share it with the viewers of the of the Housewives. We ended up shooting both of those scenes for Buying Beverly Hills and the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after we were all wrapped. Nearly a year after their split, Kyle said that she and Mauricio have talked about moving out but are still living together. That's a conversation that's happening. We're fortunate that we don't fight and we get along, so it's actually oddly work, she explained. As for whether or not they've begun dating other people, Kyle said, that's a big question. We're allowed to. We're allowed to do what we want. When asked about Brandy Glanville's recent allegations against Andy Cohen, who accused her of sexual har- who who she accused of sexual harassment, Kyle didn't want to say much. I don't want to comment on that because I don't want to deal with the aftermath of that. I think we're all responsible for what we do. I can just say to you, from my experience in all of these years, I've never been forced to drink, told to drink, nothing ever. She stated. Regarding her other former co-star Lisa Vanderpump, Kyle confessed to feeling like there is a chance they'd reconcile. I don't know. I've never say never about anything. This last year has taught me never say never, she teased. Now, this is the thing. I think, and again, this is just my opinion. I want to know what you guys think. I think Kyle desperately wants Mauricio back. And I think that Mauricio is the one who wants to continue the separation at this point. That's just what my gut says. I think that. Kyle wants to be friends with Lisa Vanderpump again. I think she's really, really missing her. Like, did you notice how, sorry if, if I, my voice went out. Did you notice how Kyle has brought Lisa Vanderpump up like a half a dozen times? You know, at the reunion, she's talking about LVP. At the at the SoFi white party, she's talking about LVP and all of that stuff. You know, she got, you know, Ken, the designer or the event planner on. I think she's really, really missing Lisa Vanderpump. You know, she's doing impressions of her and all of that stuff. But the thing is, Kyle, the way you get a friendship back isn't by, you know, making jokes and, and doing all that stuff. It's by picking up the phone and saying, hey, listen, I really miss you. And this is where I messed up in the friendship. I'm not asking anything of you. I'm just taking accountability of where I went wrong. And I want to see if you're open to talking. That's how you get a friend back or at least start the process of repairing a friendship. Because I think Kyle desperately misses Lisa Vanderpump. That's why she keeps bringing her up. It's like your friend who keeps talking about their ex from two years ago. And he's like married with a kid now. But she's like still talking about him. And you're like, girl, you need to move on. Like, just go ahead and block him so you can move on with your life. That's what it's giving. Like, Kyle gets a twinkle in her eye. And like the way she talks about Lisa Vanderpump, it's like she misses like an old boyfriend that she like wants to like check his Instagram, you know, to see if he's still in a relationship, you know, going to Facebook, checking the status if people are on Facebook anymore. But you you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, like, I think she desperately misses LVB and she kind of, she wants her back. And I think she wants Mauricio back. But I think Mauricio is kind of like, girl, you opened the gate and I'm busting wide through it. I'm busting wide through it. You opened the gate. So we'll see what happens with that. I always thought that they would get back together. I still think that. I don't know why I still think that, but I do. Like, down the line, I do. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe I'll change my mind. Who knows? I never want a family to break up, but I do want people to be happy. Okay. 
So regarding, okay, da, da, da. as she faced speculation over her marriage in mid-season 13, newbie Anna Marie, and think, and speaking of it, she does pronounce her name Anna Marie. I had this troll in my comments a little bit back was like, I can't listen to someone who doesn't know how to pronounce her name. It's Anne Marie. And I would, and I was like, I'm pretty sure she pronounces it Anna Marie. And she does. She does. It's Anna Marie. So hi, troll. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> it wasn't any of my sweet candy canes. Um, anyway. Anna Marie Wiley, 41, faced tons of backlash from fans who didn't appreciate her many questions about Sutton's esophagus. I always feel so bad when things don't go well for a new housewife, Kyle said in response. It's hard coming into this. When I came up to the show, we were all new. I say show, but it's our lives with cameras. So coming into that, I don't even know what it must feel like after all these years of being established. Kyle, shut up because you set Anna Marie up for failure. First of all, you got on the show lying, talking about she's your new friend. She wasn't your new friend. You said on Jeff Lewis, you met the chick one time. And because Bravo was hiring for diversity, in my opinion, you said, oh, I met a black chick. Her name's Anna Marie. Let's see if we can bring her on. That's kind of what I think went. That's kind of what I think happened. You know, that's just what I do. That's just how I think it went. And then you put a battery in her back being like, oh, go talk about, go after Sutton, go after Crystal, be my mouthpiece and you'll be protected on the show. And Anna Marie quickly realized that Kyle is nobody's friend. And we saw it on the show, them talking about how Anna Marie was going to go after Sutton about the esophagus. And Kyle was like laughing and being like, yeah, like we saw the scene. So it really did happen. So am I a fan of Anna Marie? No. Um, but do I think she was set up to fail given her whole Kyle situation? Yeah. I think if she would have went in being herself, then maybe she would have been more likable. Maybe she would have made better connections with the women, but she went in clearly as Kyle's mouthpiece and that did not work out for her. Uh, watching the reunion, I did feel a lot of sadness and empathy for her given that her mother had passed, was dealing with uh, like a tumor or cancer, one of the two, I can't remember. And then her, her mom had passed away. And you could tell at the reunion, like Anna Marie, like wasn't there. I think she's dealing with a lot. She's dealing with her husband allegations. She's dealing with the death of her mother. And she's dealing like looking like a damn fool on national television. So she is dealing with a lot. And I do think a lot of her problems, it's like a tick. It's like a like, I think there's something not, like, all the cylinders aren't firing. Like, every, all the syntaxes aren't connecting. Like, there's something amiss with her. And so I do feel bad for her in that sense because I do think something's a little off. Um, and I mean that respectfully. Like, I really do. I really do. I just think there's something, like, all the ships aren't coming into the dock at the same time. Like, something's off. And so I think she was kind of set up to fail. I think Anna Marie doesn't need to come back, not just because I don't vibe with her as a housewife, but as a human and as a woman, or just as a human, I guess. Oh, no, we're women, as a woman too. I want her to really take care of herself. I really do. I think she's not in a good way. I really want her to look after her own health mentally and physically and I want her to look after her children because I think the death of her mother coupled with the allegations against her her husband that has to be a pretty pretty dark place so I think she needs to take care of herself first and to get to a place where she can really take care of her children because that can't be a fun conversation to have you know what I'm saying so I hope she gets help and she just needs I don't know. I don't think she needs to be on our screen. Let's put it that way. But Kyle, in my opinion, is dead wrong. You set that girl up for failure. And then once she failed, you were like, I don't know that girl. <laughs> you were like, I don't know her. Who that? <laughs> okay. Looking ahead to the future with Bravo, Kyle admitted she's unsure of a season 14 return. I never know. One day I will leave. I just don't know right now. I have so much on my plate that I can't think about that at this moment, she noted. That said, she does have some people she'd like to see on season 14. 
Teddy Mellon Camp. People want to see my sister Kim. I love Eileen. Lisa Renna was great on the show, she said. As for the current cast, Kyle said they talk off the show as well as on. I'm supposed to have dinner with Erica soon, and actually Renna also, she revealed. Now, I got a couple of things to say about that one. The reason why Kyle wants Teddy back is because she needs a loyal mouthpiece who will never defy her. We don't want Teddy back. I wouldn't mind having Kim back. I wouldn't mind having Eileen back. Lisa Renna needs to stay on pause. The reason why I think she's getting dinner with Erica and then maybe Renna too, she's getting dinner with Erica because she doesn't have anybody else. So she has to keep Erica as an ally. I think that it's like, the lesser of two evils in her mind because she clearly doesn't like Dorit for a myriad of reasons what's going on with them. I'm going to do a deep dive into the demise of their friendship as well, but she doesn't have anybody. She doesn't rock with, with, with Garcelle or Sutton or Crystal. Anna Marie is a one and done flop. Um, she's beefing with Dorit. She doesn't have anybody else. So she has to anchor with Erica because she needs someone on the show. And I have said this and I stand by it. My gut, remember when in the leaked text messages that Dorit showed to production for the reunion and Kyle says, and again, Kyle not being very emotionally intelligent because I'm going to tell you what Kyle did and I'm going to tell you what an emotionally intelligent person actually does. So Kyle's like, I heard you said something about me and I can't say what it is or who or who said it, but it really, really hurt me and I haven't been able to say anything, blah, 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 blah. I think Lisa Renna told Kyle whatever it was that her and Dorit were talking trash about Kyle. Maybe Dorit did it in a text. Maybe she did it in a DM. Maybe it was just verbal. But I think Lisa Renna is still so burnt and mad that she got fired I think she's trying to do anything she can to get back on the show I think it was Rena who told Kyle what Dorit allegedly said or didn't say an emotionally immature person would take what that person said as the gospel truth be so hurt and in their feelings about it and and ruin a friendship over it now, do I think that's the only reason why Kyle stopped messing with Dorit? No. Do I think she used it as uh, an excuse because she wanted reasons to be mad at Dorit instead of just saying, Dorit, I'm mad at you because you've been smelling my husband and you're looking overly familiar and the world is laughing thinking that you're having sex with my husband and that's why I can't look at you anymore. But instead of saying that, I'm going to use every other excuse in the book. What an, what an emotionally intelligent person does is say, oh, wow, thank you for this information. And they either disregard it and they kind of look at that person and go, why did you tell me this? What is your agenda? Or they go to, the, to that person who is their good girlfriend and say, hey, Lisa Renna just said you said this. She sent me this screenshot or here are the receipts or she told me you said this to her. Let's talk about it. Is this true? Why is it true? Because you can't take anybody's word about anything for the gospel truth. You can't. You have to think about why are you saying this? Why are you wanting to put a ridge between us? You know? And then also, usually when people come to you and they're like, oh, this person was talking about you, well, they were talking about you too. Unless they just sat there and said nothing. Or did they say, hey, that's my friend. Stop talking crap about my friend. If not, they were participating and talking about you too. But it's just mad day between that person and the other person that now they want to bring this to you. I think Kyle just wanted reasons to be mad at Dorit. You know, she just wanted reasons to be mad at her. So there's that. Anyway, and her Bravo relationships aren't limited to the Beverly Hills cast. Kyle has also stayed in touch with other Real Housewives Ultimate Girlship co-stars. She texts and sees Kenya when she's here. I love Kenya. Luann and I and Ramona will text me if she's in Aspen. Well, good for you, Kyle. Do you want a cookie that you hang out with Kenya, Luann, and Ramona? Yikes. I think 
I think Kyle could take a pause. I would be okay with Kyle taking a pause. Unless she comes back really ready to be open and honest. Other than that, I'm okay with her kind of sitting down and having several seats for a bit. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. You know, what do you think about Kyle and this hat tattoo? Are you like me and you're like, she got it because she's always worn hats and it's really because of her love of Kimo Sabe, but their PR team is going to spin it like she got the hat from Morgan for content, for fodder, for headlines. You see what I'm saying? And then what do you think about Kyle and Mauricio? Do you think they really will divorce? I think ugh, I'm torn at this part. I'm not I'm not 100% sure anymore. Because now I feel like he is actually more checked out of the marriage than she is. And that's always a dangerous place to be um, when, you're, when you're married to someone. So who knows? And do you think Kyle and Morgan are real? Or do you think it's a fake relationship? So go ahead and let me know what you guys think and put it down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to our next story. I think I'll do... Let's do Andy Cohen and Leah McSweeney. Okay. So Andy Cohen denies claims in Real Housewives of New York star Leah McSweeney's lawsuit. They are completely false. So let's break it down. This is in Us Weekly. According to court documents attained by The Hollywood Reporter, Leah named Bravo, NBC Universal, production in production house Shed Media U, and producers John Paparazzo, Lisa Shannon, and Darren Ward in her Tuesday, February 27th filing. In the suit, the reality star claims the network intentionally played into her struggle with alcoholism. The lawsuit also targets Andy Cohen, accusing him of playing favorites with those who party with him. Cohen engaged in nose candy used with housewives and other Bravo celebrities, Bravo celebrities that he employs and rewards housewives with whom he uses nose, can nose candy with more favorable treatment and edits the doc states per the outlet. In the suit, McSweeney says Bravo had a rotted workplace culture that uniquely depended on pressuring its employees to consume alcohol. She claimed she told producers before her first season that she'd been sober for 30 days and was working to maintain her sobriety, but was pressured to drink all three seasons she appeared on the show and alleged producers retaliated against her when she wanted to stay sober and intentionally failed to provide reasonable accommodations that would aid her efforts to stay, to stay so sober and able to perform. I'm going to stop there. Leah, shut up and go home. Again, frivolous lawsuit. I am so sick and tired of these entitled reality stars, celebrities, whatever the hell you want to call them, using our legal system for 15 minutes of fame in a money grab. This ain't it, Leah. Do I think Andy Cohen has favorites? 100%. Is it based on who he does or does not allegedly do nose candy with? Doubtful. Very, very doubtful. I think he just has his favorites. Um, do I think that the producers and the culture of the producers pressure you or force you to drink? To be honest with you, no. I think that... You may think you have to do that, but that doesn't mean that that's actually what is going on, you know? And we've had all these people come out to support Andy, you know, from Luann. She's like, I've been sober and I never got pressure to drink. And that also comes to the point of your own accountability. If you are an alcoholic and if you need to be sober or you're addicted to something, don't put yourself in situations where you feel the pressure to drink. Being on reality TV is not your only option for livelihood. You know, Leah came out herself. She said she makes more money on fans only than she ever made on The Housewives. So go do that, boo-boo. You have to start taking personal accountability. If you're sober, don't go into a bar. Duh. 
And then don't be like the bartender pressured me to drink while well, you're at a bar. They're doing their job. You know, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And she's kind of pulling a Nini with this. Like, oh, Andy Cohen does nose candy. Now, I'm not defending Andy Cohen because I do think his, you know, behavior is inappropriate and questionable. However, do I think it merits Leah McSweeney's lawsuit? I don't. I don't. There just comes a point where you just have to be accountable for yourself. And also, again, it's giving Nini and it's giving Rachel from Vanderpump Rules, who's now also suing, as we know. It's giving that because it's like when you're not in favor, when you're no longer being offered roles, then all of a sudden it's a toxic workplace that you now feel so violated that you want to sue them. But but if they had offered you a role back, you would have been happily back in your role. You, it, you can't have it both ways. It can't be so horrible that it's affecting your sobriety. But if they said, hey, Leah, do you want to come on the... I bet you if they said, Leah, come join the reboot of New York, she would have been right there on, on New York. And the reason why I can say that is because she was right there on Ultimate Girls Trip. You knew what it was about. You knew the housewives. You know reality TV. Why did you take Ultimate Girls Trip? Oh, well, that's right. Because you made 250 k for a week's worth where all you did was complain about your cramps. So shut up, Leah. I can't. I can't. While filming abroad in Thailand, Leah claims that her rights were violated when she was not allowed to seek care for her addiction issues and was denied proper transplantation to, to AA meetings while filming while filming after being told attending would not be a problem. She also claims she was mentally manipulated to draw better ratings. Uh, you were boring as hell, Leah. Now, them not providing transportation to AA, okay, on that one. If you said, I need transportation to AA while we are on location, and they said, yeah, we'll give you transportation, and they didn't, I'm with you on that one. That's messed up. If they're going to, they need to provide you transportation to your AA meetings if, um, if you were told that. Now, I don't know if I believe Leah, because she seems like a liar to me and an opportunist. So I don't know if that's true, but if it is true, that part, I agree. If I say, hey, job, you need me on location. I'm an alcoholic. I need to go to my AA meetings. Can you provide transportation? And they say, cool, cool. Then they need to provide the transportation. So on that part, I agree if that is actually true, because I don't know what is true or not with Leah. Leah joined the Roni cast in 2019 for two seasons, followed by Peacock's third season of The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip which filmed in 2022 and aired one year later. So if you're doing two years of a show and then a third season of a show, so you did three seasons of reality TV? No. It's on you, Leah. It's on you. On Tuesday, the Bravo Leverty took to social media to open up about the lawsuit, calling it a story she never thought she would be telling. In fact, I was petrified to speak on it, and I was warned not to, she wrote via Instagram hours after the suit was filed. <laughs> sorry you guys sorry about that your favorite bravo shows are run by people who create a dangerous work environment encourage substance abuse to artificially create drama and and cynically prey on vulnerabilities of their employees she continued there will be so much there's so much more that comes out once the people involved are questioned under oath today i'm taking back my reality the reckless and diabolical way in which the people at the top drool over the mishaps and misfortunes of the women, including myself, are disturbing. It's a workplace culture where toxicity, alcoholism, and pain are not only expected, but encouraged and facilitated. That is something I most definitely did not sign up for, nor would I ever endorse. Um, Leah, that's actually exactly what you did sign up for. Not once, not twice, but three times. So what are you talking about? Leah noted there is nothing more important than her sobriety, adding that without it, she risks losing everything. I have been very transparent about my about my addiction and recovery, she continued. However, there however, there are personal things in my in the lawsuit that I never want to disclose for fear of being judged and shamed. But I'm at a point in my life now where I feel strong enough to withstand whatever may come my way. Girl. Leah's lawsuit comes one week after alum, um, alum Brandy Glanville made sexual harassment claims against Andy. 
Glanville's legal team sent a letter to NBC Universal, Shed Media, and Shed's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, claiming that Andy told Glanville that he wanted to sleep with another Bravo star while thinking of her. According to the note, Cohen allegedly invited Brandy to watch him engage in sex via FaceTime. The letter also claimed that Branville felt trapped and disgusted by Andy's abuse of power as he was her boss at the time. Mm-mm-mm. Cohen subsequently responded to Glanville claims claiming that he and below deck star Kate Chastain were joking when they sent the video in question. It was an absolute mint and jest and Brandy's response clearly communicated she was in on the joke. He wrote via Twitter on February 22nd. That said, it was totally inappropriate and I apologize. <sighs> what a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Again, the problem is two things can be true at the same time. Can it be true that perhaps there is a pressure, whether it is an actual pressure? And what I mean by actual, it's like the producers are saying, if you don't drink, you'll be fired versus a perceived pressure where someone in their own mind thinks, if I don't flip a table, fight somebody, get blackout drunk. I won't be good TV. I won't bring the drama and I'll be fired. Though both things can, you know, is there a perceived pressure to create a dramatic, at times toxic and violent environment on reality TV? That I would say yes. I do think that there is a perceived pressure. You know, people are like, oh, this person's iconic. They did this like crazy thing and she blah, 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 like all the time. But that doesn't mean that there's an actual pressure. And if you're going to sue someone, you need to prove actual pressure, not just in your mind pressure. Also, can it be true that Leah is just trying to get a payday because she knows she's no longer in favor at Bravo and probably won't be asked back for more shows? I think all those things are true. I think there is a, per a perceived pressure to perform, to perform, but that doesn't mean there's an actual pressure. And I do think that Leah is only suing Bravo and Andy and all these other people because she wants a payday because she knows that, well, if I sue them and lose, oh, well, they're not hiring me anyway. But if I sue them and win, then I got a bag. That's where I think Leah's at with this. Um... But I don't believe the allegations against Andy that the people he parties with with nose candies are the people that he favors. Because Andy ha favors Candy Burris. Candy Burris doesn't even drink. You know? So I don't think that there's a correlation between the two of those things. Is there favoritism? Yes. Is it obvious? Yes. He has his favorites at the reunion. He has the favorites that he hangs out with. But I don't think that they are his favorites because of the reasons that she's saying. Or that if you don't do this with Andy, then somehow you are going to be retaliated against. That to me doesn't make any sense. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that you're going to be retaliated against with Bravo and NBC if you're not doing nose candy with Andy Cohen. That doesn't make any sense either. Do I think Andy has been sloppy and he needs to clean it up? Yes. Do I think Andy is from a very older school where not just in entertainment, but like in finance and the medical field and a lot of in business, it's been a lot of, you know, you got to snooze, schmooze with the bosses, you know, you got to the good old boys club. You know, you have to go for drinks, you have to go play golf, you have to do this, whatever. You have to smooth, you know, with the boss. I do think that there is this, I'm not saying it's a right thing, I'm just saying it is a part of society and culture where people do smooth with the boss for favor, for whatever the case is, for promotions, for whatever it is. I think Andy comes from, I don't know how old he is, but I think he might come from an older school. And again, I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying it's a lot of times how culture is that they don't see anything wrong with after hours kind of smoozing, having parties, having insights jokes, doing nose candy, drinking and taking shots. Like this happens across all industries, all industries. 
this happens all the time. I'm not saying it's right. But what I'm but, but what I don't think it is is that if you don't do this with Andy, then somehow it's a detriment to you. And that's what I think the crux of her lawsuit has to hang on, and that's why I think she's full of it. You know, I I think she's full of it. I think she's mad that they don't mess with her anymore and she's looking for a payout. I never liked Leah from day one. I think she's very fake. I think she's very phony. I don't think we ever saw the real Leah. I think she was a representative on the show. I think she came on with an agenda. She was going to be sex positive. She was going to be this liberal girl doing it where I think behind the scenes, I think she's actually very conservative. I'm not going to get too political but you know what I mean. And I think that her whole I'm going to convert to Judaism was a lie storyline. I never really rock with Leah. I think she wasn't the right person to cast for the show. She never fit with the girls. Never fit with, like, why would you put Leah and Ramona and Luann and Sonia together? That doesn't even make any sense. She would have been a better fit. I don't think she's a fit in general. But she would have been a better, more logical fit for the reboot with the new girls if she, as a newbie. I don't know why they ever cast her with the older cast. Never made any sense. There's a lot of people on Bravo who either don't drink or used to drink, but they don't drink now. Lala. Um, DJ James Kennedy. Candy doesn't drink. Um, who else doesn't drink? Uh, what's, um, Shep, you know, on, um, Southern Charm, Andy was being like, maybe you need to like check your drinking and maybe get some help for that. He was encouraging him not to drink. So it's like, I don't think that her case has any merit. She just needs to go away. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think. I think Andy needs to clean it up a bit and not be so sloppy with it. Like, have better boundaries, understand it's 2024, and that sort of good old boys mentality of I can drink with my with my employees and I can say sexually inappropriate things to them and it's ha-ha, wink-wink, it's a nudge, everybody's ending the joke. Because at the end of the day, what he did was inappropriate. You know, it is inappropriate for your boss to be wasted. And I'm, I'm talking about Brandy to be wasted and to FaceTime you and say, I want to have sex with this other employee while you watch or while, while you watch and I'm thinking of you. That is inappropriate. But do I think Brandy actually felt disgusted and pressured and like so harassed by it? No, I don't. So I do think that he needs to clean it up a bit, have better boundaries. You know, do that with John Mayer and your friends. Do that with Anderson Cooper. Don't do that with people who you employ. Get new friends. Have better boundaries. But I think the lawsuits are taking it too far. You know? And it's also frivolous because if Brandy or Nini or Leah or Rachel were still giving opportunities by Bravo... I don't think that they would be suing them. And that to me makes it opportunist and disingenuous, you know? So that's kind of where I land with it. But I want to know what you guys think. So as always, put it down below. Virgo Queen says, I kind of feel bad for Andy. I agree. I agree. I agree 100% because I, because there's a difference between doing something that's inappropriate, sure, and doing something that is actually um, abusive, you know, there's there's levels to it. There's nuances to it where I don't think Andy Cohen has ever been abusive with the ladies where they really, truly feel I'm sexually harassed. And if I don't do this, my job's on the line and blah. I don't believe that for a second. Has he been inappropriate? Yeah. He admitted it. He said it wasn't appropriate, and I'm sorry. He admitted it. But there's a difference between somebody being inappropriate versus somebody actually being predatorial. And for any of these lawsuits to have basis, he has to be predatorial. And I'm not saying I'm defending Andy Cohen. I'm just saying what my thoughts are. 
I've never gotten that Andy Cohen is predator. You know what I mean? He's not like a Weinstein. He's not like a um, Matt Lauer. You know, he's not like, you know what I'm saying? He's not our, like, it's like, come on now. I've never gotten the sense that Andy Cohen is a predator where people truly felt sick or disgusted or in danger or pressured. I think he's been sloppy and inappropriate, but he hasn't been abusive or predatorial. And that's what pisses me off with people who do these types of lawsuits, because the true people who have been abused, who have been victims of workplace predators, who have been a victims of true sexual harassment, it's harder for them to then tell. It's harder for them to sue. It's harder for them to get their justice because all we're looking at is a bunch of bitter, washed up chicks who are trying to get a bag from Bravo. And that's where I stand with it. And it's really, really sad. Because they're making it harder for people who have to wake up every day nine to five and go to a job and grit their teeth and bear it because they need to put food on their table. Now, I'm not saying that Leah and her family and Brandy and Nini and all these people don't need to eat. They do. But you don't have to be on reality TV, sweetheart. There are some people who, if they have their living paycheck to paycheck, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? There are true people who have to go to their job. That maybe they're looking for something else, but they have to get their job. And they really are going through predatory, abusive things. Like Andy Cohen calling you wasted, like, Andy, Brandy, shut up. Like, stop. There are some people who are truly being harassed and abused and preyed on who have no choice but to work, who have no choice but to grin and bear it, you know? And it makes it so much harder for those people to get the help and the resources and the support and be believed. So that's what pisses me off about these women. And that's why I have no problem calling them bitter Betty, bitter Bettys, because that's what they are. They're bitter. Because I promise you, if Bravo called them today and said, hey, you want to do a show? I bet you all of them would say yes. All of them would say yes. It's ridiculous. Anyway, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, you guys, I'm going to give my voice a break and I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up and chat with me. And in the meantime, let's go through some of your candy cane questions and comments. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, Tijno Bob says no. Hey, Tay Tay the Savior, Ariana didn't know about the affair until Ariana saw the video on Sandoval's phone. Exactly. Hey, Kristen, laughing my A off. She needs to be put in the nut house. Rachel, yeah, she really does. Hey, Adam, what's up, sweetheart? Hi, Candy. All is good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You want to sound off? Yes. Uh, I mean, which, which topic do you want to start on first? Anyone you want, anyone you want. Okay, let's talk about um, the biggest hypocrite in the book, aka Kyle. Yes. Okay. Go. Yeah. She is really the biggest hypocrite. She is obsessed with Lisa Vanderpump, mm -hmm. and I, and that obsessed is with a capital O. Mm -hmm. At the end, at and. As you said, she clearly, you know, forgot the principles that you learn in school. Making some dead joke and some crappy shade is not going to retain. And truth be told, I don't mm -hmm. think Lisa. I don't think Lisa misses her one bit. I think you know she, what she did was such a a nasty thing to do. I mean, you know, there was no support. Kyle was like, you know. The rest of the cast want her gone. I'm gonna do what it uh, I can to be the one and only MVP. Even though, in my opinion, she was never the MVP mm -hmm. because, uh, and you know, I don't have to share the joint title of uh, hanging out with another OG. Mm -hmm. And with 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 her ambience and 
you know, oh, I, let's be honest, be honest. You know, we're, I mean, Rena said it in herself. We're here, you know, on their show to sign up for their real lives. And let's be real, Rena didn't show what, you know, with all the speculation with Harry Hamlin, she never showed her life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I think it's just insulting the way that she has gone about the whole Mauricio, you know, as, as we have both said multiple times, the difference with Kyle compared to, you know, the, the likes of, I, I don't know, Crystal, is that she is actually friends with the production team, the, the, head, the headliner guy, Alex Baskin, Mm-hmm. And the other one, Douglas Ross, who owned the company before they sold it to um, MGM. Mm-hmm. But she, she, you know, is inviting them to their houses and Aspen, what have you. And mm-hmm. that's how she secured the perfect edit. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and and you know the whole, you know, I the whole thing where it, she has um, first chair reunion in her contract and and what and. W- w- all, all these aspects it is just so sus mm-hmm. and and my the problem the problem i also have is that mm-hmm. she is someone she is someone i liked until about season six okay she, she she is someone that i thought was you know you're not my favorite that was always lisa Fanapump pump and camille but you're someone who's bearable mm-hmm. and someone who so some someone who I, I found, you know, nice house in Bel Air, showed for life, but then obviously was was on something because decided to move to the valley. Mm-hmm. And if if you had to if you had to sum up Kyle Richards in a word, what would your one word be? Um I would say she's I was gonna say hypocrite, but she's I don't think it's that. I think it's like two faced. I would say she's two faced in every sense of the word word. I don't think we've mm-hmm. actually ever seen the real Kyle. I think there's a much different side to her that is the real her. I don't think we've ever really seen her. I think she has one face on the show and one face that's the real her, and we've never seen her. Interesting. Yeah, I would say two faced. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think hypocrite and two faced are the two words that kind of come to mind for me. Yeah, and but I, I think I think two faced uh, actually sums it up a bit better because that's, and with her friends, yeah, that's her identity. Two faced with LVP, her sisters, Dorit, two faced as hell with Dorit. So and, and again, surprisingly, um, the candy canes decided to be Team Kyle over the, the Dorit poll. which as much as i don't like um discount peter griffin and lois aka fatboy kempsey and dorit Mm -hmm. i'm on team dorit with that text kyle was being a manipulative troll quite frankly i'm actually team i'm I'm team kyle with the text no i i I, I think you with kyle calculated calculated don't and does and she was trying to try it i mean you know, I know Camille was trying to defend Kyle and what have you. Purely, I think, you know, with with, with Camille, I, she, I mean, Camille was the first person to call it out with, with Fatboy Kempsey and Dorit about their fake finances. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but with the text, if I was in that position, and let's just say you and I were on a reality show, mm-hmm. and you and I received this calculated message from let's just say this girl's name is Emma. Okay. And and I'm thinking, you know, it's the day before the reunion. I haven't spoken to you for two and a half months. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to block me from expressing myself. The first thing that comes to mind is just calculated. And well, the thing ca- is, this is the thing. The reason why in the fight overall, I'm not really on either of their sides because I understand both of them. Like, if I was Kyle, I don't know if I could be 
the same way with Dorit, given the Mauricio cheating rumor. But I would hope that I would be emotionally intelligent enough to be honest about that's actually why I'm beefing with you. Where I think yeah. Kyle isn't being honest about the why. And so she's so she looks ridiculous being like, you didn't, you know, I heard you said something about me, but I'm not going to say who said it or what was said. Oh my God, you didn't defend Teddy on watch on Bravo Con. Like, oh my God, that was stupid stupid stuff, stuff, right? <laughs> oh my God, you said this. You said this about Kathy. You know, at the reunion. So Kyle is basically using every. She's using everything she can to justify why she's mad at Dorit, and the reason why it's not landing is because that's not really why you're mad at her. You're mad at her because she was smelling your husband like she knew him in a sexual way and the entire world took it and ran. That's why you're mad at her. So until, she, so until she truly says that, she's not going to win because nothing is going to land because it's not real. It's not authentic. Now, when it comes to um, the text, I think that Dorit is trying to save her diamond. She needs a storyline and she knew exactly what she was doing. But this is the thing. To me, I don't think Kyle was trying to manipulate her. Kyle was basically like, we haven't been rocking for a while. They don't really know that. I'm just making sure that we're going to keep up the same lie at the reunion that we've been keeping up all season. Because Dorit could have exposed Kyle the entire season. But she didn't. That's why Kyle said they don't even know this. She didn't. You know what I mean? Like Dorit was keeping it close to the chest the same way Kyle was. Hey Chelsea. Yes, but but hi Chelsea. Um, but but yeah. the one thing that kind of got me was just how Kyle was like, "Oh, you mentioned it on camera," and it's just like, you know, I, I think maybe you're I agree, right. In the I, sense I, there is some manufacturing, you know, premeditated stuff because it is Kyle at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But but I think I don't like just, how. Sorry. I I I just think it, you know it, it it's. It's a weird dynamic, you know, but. Mm -hmm. I don't like how I felt like during the reunion, Kyle was trying to set the narrative against Dorit. Like, you're the reason why you're questioning, like, alert to people about the rumors of me and Morgan. And I'm mm -hmm. glad Dorit said something mm -hmm. to Kyle about that. Like, Kyle, your stuff has been out there. So I see, like, I see both sides. I do see Adam's side where it came off a little calculated, but I also see your side, Candy, where you're saying, like, she's just not being honest. So it looks, like, snakish on her side. But I also think it looks snakish because, like, didn't Kyle, re like, say that her and Dorit really weren't, they really weren't close like that? But then they are, like, I feel like it's it's a benefit to Kyle when she wants friends to be close with her which is not just you think only pick and choose like, type of thing she picks and choose like she did it with erica and like did it with is doing it now with dorit and i think she's done it in past seasons but it's just kind of like i i and yes, i think dorit it's need, dorit needed a storyline so she did yeah. i think that she, she did you know reveal that had they been a little bit closer and had she been like talking with her, I, you know, think it, she wouldn't have revealed that and she could have just had the storylines with um, who, um, 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 Crystal, mm -hmm. with Crystal, you know what I mean? But I feel like, you know, she was upset. I think Dorit felt embarrassed too. Like mm -hmm. Kyle is embarrassing me. I thought we were friends and here, you know, um, Kyle saying that we barely even vacationed together. So, and, you know, her showing Erica and Erica agreeing that way. But Erica, too, probably not knowing, like, I just don't want because Kyle is very, like, secretive. She wants to be she wants to control what gets out there. So she doesn't want us to know, like, she's real. That's what she's really irritated about or bothered about. You know what I mean? That my that there's rumors about my friend hooking up with my husband. The thing is, she's I don't not think real life. I don't know with Kyle and maybe when it comes to her admitting that. I don't know if she's admitted that to herself. Because mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, given everything. What I mean is like, there's a lot of times as people, we could be really bothered by something, but it could be so hurtful if what we're bothered by comes to be true. Like denial is, is yeah. one of the biggest protectors we have. So I'm not even sure Kyle has allowed herself to truly process that this is the real reason why I'm mad at her. 
is because because think about and I'm not defending Kyle, but just as a human being, everything she it really is going through. Her best friend took her own life. Her marriage is in shambles. She separated from a 27 year marriage. Um, her, she doesn't know who she is. She's having a huge identity crisis. Ozempic, maybe, maybe not working out, losing the weight, faking this lesbian relationship. <laughs> All of this stuff going on, you know, I think that for her, because and also our minds and our emotions, our brains always try to protect us and keep us safe. I'm not even 100% sure that Kyle has allowed herself to truly look at the fact of why she's so mad at Dorit. I think she understands it on a certain level. I don't think she's truly digested it yet. Um, and I think that the reason why she was like, oh, I don't know Dorit like that anymore is Dorit was 100% correct when she said at the reunion, I know your nature and you're a punisher. So I mm -hmm. don't think it's the fact that Kyle was trying to like pick and choose who she's friends with in this moment. I think it's more of her where she's at emotionally because people's levels of emotional intelligence vary is when you hurt me, I'm going to ice you out. And I'm going to make you the villain and I'm going to be the victim and I'm going to punish you that way. And I think Dorit was spot on because that is how Kyle is. And it shows up mm -hmm. as, you know, all of a sudden these two people are best friends. She does one thing Kyle doesn't like. All of a sudden, I don't know that chick. Right? Yes. That's Kyle's and she definitely MO. rolled her eyes when she and, was and like, she you're a punisher. And she rolled her eyes when you're a she punisher like and all that. Exactly. And she's like, I know your nature. And Dorit was correct, you know. And when Dorit was... In Kyle's favor, Dorit had no problem being a little yes person, not because mm -hmm. because the thing is, Dorit was also using Kyle. I don't think Dorit really likes Kyle like that, but she wanted the cover to stay on the show and the whole four, four, four Fox Five thing. So I oh, think God. that they were both <laughs> using each other. Kyle likes to use friends who are yes people and mouthpieces for her. Anna Marie, uh, Teddy used to be Ding Dong Dorit. She likes to use people who are yes people and mouthpieces. But the moment you do something, look what she did. Kyle did it to Camille. She did it to um, Carlton. The moment you do something she doesn't like, just like Dorit said, she will punish you for it. She did it to Kathy. She did it to Kim. You know, all of that stuff. That that's really is her nature. So I think that that's why she was like, oh, I don't really know her like that. It's exaggerated. She's punishing her because she's mad at her and because it might be too painful to actually go there with her because I mm -hmm. get that they're reality stars, but they're still human beings. And sometimes, and like I, I'll speak for myself. If I was married and I had a really good friend and she was married and we were couples together and all of a sudden, everybody in our life thought that my husband was having sex with my best friend, that might be a very, very painful thing to actually have to look at. So mm -hmm. I might do normal things like deny, like numb, like distance, like punish, because I'm protecting myself from what could be a really big pain. That's mm -hmm. just human nature. And that is what I think is going on between Kyle and Dorit. Yeah. But and the at thing the same is, time, like not but, being but, real, but it's, but it's hurting Dorit. But not too, being weird. It, exactly. Yeah. It's hurting both of them. It's hurting mm -hmm. both of them. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest problem because I think if they actually tackled that this season, this season would have been amazing. Not because I want drama of friends fighting and this person having sex with that person, but because that's the humanity that I think the sh exactly yeah. that the show would need. And then I could look at both of these women and be like, I see myself in you. I want to see how this is going to work out because I think anybody in that situation, and look at Dorit and PK, they're basically broken up. Both of these marriages oh, have crumbled, both yeah. of them, because it's not just K Kyle who's hurt, PK as well. Because on the flip side, oh. PK is the Kyle. Imagine you're a dude, you have a bromance going, <laughs> you know? Imagine you're a dude. PK is the Kyle. Adam, you are a dude, right? <laughs> Look, imagine you're a dude and you have a bromance with a guy that you, you think you're good friends, you might go into business together, you're couples, and then all of a sudden, everybody in the world and in your life thinks that your good guy friend is having sex with your wife. And yeah. you wonder yes. why he's now not wearing the ring and he's in London for the entire season. He misses the white party. He's hanging out at the hotel. She's like, you're not here for me. And now they're uh, living separate lives. So both of these marriages have fundamentally broken down, but yet none of them are actually talking about why. And it's not a coincidence that the same exact time, both of these two couples 
marriages are basically, you know, disintegrating in front of our eyes right mm -hmm. after the big scandal that, hey, maybe two of these people have been boinking behind the scenes. Yes. But... That is what that is what season 13 really should have been about. Not I agree. In a, not, not an esophagus. Oh my god, don't not even who's esophagus. drinking Ugh. and not who's working Ugh. out. That's what this season really would have been about. And that would have been powerful television. That would have been I very powerful know. television. That is it's a huge so missed opportunity. Storylines and just yeah, exactly. Beverly Hills was so it was very mid. It was very mid. Like mm -hmm. I was able, I'm able to push through and I watched it. I mean, just like the rest of them, but they're just not grasping my attention. And I feel like Sutton, you know, as usual, brought it the best. And yep. I really hope Anne Marie doesn't come back next season, you guys. Oh god, like, no, I, she she's I, not even when, she was, even when she was crying, you guys, like I'm I like I want to be a therapist, you know, I'm going to school for that. Yay! And I really try, thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you school. Y'all, this is my first week, so um, Oh my anyway, god, good job! Yes, congrats. congrats. You're gonna Yay. kill it, girl. You're gonna kill it. Thank you. That's why Candy, mm -hmm. I always like your videos and how you break them down because I really feel like you you bring the drama like give us the drama right and give us the tea yeah. but i feel like you dive you dive in more like um a psychological sense between these people because we're human mm -hmm. like you literally just said it yeah. we're, human. we're human and that's what like i appreciate and i really did feel bad for Anne marie you know her mother you know passing away yeah. and i was like well why didn't they show that and i was like well maybe she didn't want that to be shown because it was so soon and like very raw and sensitive so i was like okay i'll give her grace but you know she's crying she's talking i'm just like girl i just production did you dirty you did yourself dirty your mm -hmm. husband it doesn't help with your husband like you just your whole package i know there's sometimes they're like you know give them another season but i'm just at the point where like i really no, it's just no done. for me it's just, yeah. done. it's a hard no and i feel bad you i know, agree a, i want to give my black sister a chance but girl you really just dropped the ball and we have to stay next we got to 100 percent i think I was, no i, I think what so candy was saying that. about 8.5 um i think there's some truth in it in fact in the sense that it, i feel that 8.5 i don't know what it is and i'm trying to say this again uh reiterate candy's point in the nicest way but i just felt the sense throughout the show there was some communication difficulty or problem that she has i yeah. just felt I, I i just did not feel synergy or i felt sometimes like i was like a ghost was on the screen like i don't really I, it just it just felt very bizarre and to to me even uh even sashin said on one of the after show um episodes that i didn't know who she was even trying to speak to and I thought, and, and, oh. I, and as, mean, as mean as that may sound, Sutton was just spelling it out. And, mm -hmm. and but the, I think the problem with Beverly Hills, you, you know, as you, as you were saying with the same, with um, with washed up Leah, mm -hmm. that that you know, <laughs> but, I was like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I don't I don't necessarily believe that he had that um that. That that the that, that Andy allegedly does this snow. I I I I don't, and you know he has his favorites such as Ramona and Teresa and and what have you, but 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 I think with with Beverly Hills it's just a completely different dynamic in the sense that Kyle has just formed this not even a work relationship like a proper friendship with those two guys who used to own the production company until they sold it two seasons ago that and i feel that because she's friends with them the credit's always in her favor and and mm. uh, and you know with um uh and with with kyle she's you know she, uh, and kind of the same with candy like uh burr summit well, formerly from Atlanta, <laughs> um, that, you know, they're not, like, begging to be besties with Andy. They've more formed their strength and strong relationships with the production company. Um, I forget the name of the Atlanta one. Uh, it's Peach or something. I forget the production company name. But but Candy, even though they were kind of flops, she had some spin-offs that 
gave her decent checks and and what have you and mm-hmm. and I feel that you know with the other franchises such, such as uh, Potomac they're more kind of let me kind of be uh, on my best behavior for Andy ty- type of vibe and yeah uh, uh, but but because Kyle doesn't have to have that she's more kind of oh I'm uh, I'm not necessarily their best friend but I'm tight with 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 uh, the production guys that own that used to own the company they cu- they come to my house in Aspen once or twice a year I've seen her feature them on her story um because the queens of bravo count yeah. shared it and you know you don't put it this way uh, no no one from Potomac uh, production is is going on holiday with uh Wendy Osifo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <know>? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Because, because a what good point. because what but 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 I, I just feel just the hypocrisy and you know you know uh even though um I agree oh. with what you were saying, Candy, about you know Kyle should just you know phone Lisa, you know, she probably has to do it on like a a number that isn't hers, Mauricio's or <laughs> Faye Rancid, because I'm pretty sure that I mean, we all know that Lisa Vanderpump probably blocked Faye Ransom ages ago, and 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 Kyle's definitely blocked. I mean, but yeah. but 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 uh-huh. but, Ky- but with Kyle, she um, you know how at the reunion, okay, uh, uh, Fat Boy Kemsley, Discount Lois, Family Guy, um's wife, was um, was trying trying to say that she has this independent uh. Oh, I, I I never met Kathy with you, Kyle. Type of thing. That was when mm-hmm. I kind of was on Kyle's side because, in theory, yeah, you, you only you only met Kathy as a third wheel through Lisa Vanderpump. You were literally third. She was third wheel in Lisa and uh, Kathy's friendship. There was no. Whilst I believe Sutton, on the other hand, actually had a dynamic mm-hmm. relationship with right, Kathy. Yeah. And, I'll tell you. And, what- and the thing that Kyle doesn't like is that the likes of Sutton and Crystal actually are Kathy's friend more than her friend exactly and 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 and, and, you know with with Dorit trying to pretend that she's sincerely was Kathy's buddy was that was a that was just laughable but but in but in terms of uh you know Erica kind of said it all that she kind of like you know Kathy's not my vibe uh kind of like she didn't say the words but she pretty much was like f her kind of thing because she was she was teaming up with Toxic Renner um but but I feel with Kyle she kind of wants for likes of, or, or, of Sutton and even though I don't like Crystal because I think she's a manipulative liar okay she 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 doesn't oh. like it that they're Kathy's <laughs> friends no, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll I don't. I don't. I was like, "Whoa, guy." Well, I, I, mean, I think. I, it down, I, it down. I know. Well, I think. I think to the point about a couple things. One, I would. I, I want to say really quickly. Thank you so much, Kimberly Lindsay. Says Candy definitely has a great and much appreciated psychological commentary and insight. Thank you. I think I was Bro. like a a psychologist in a past life. Because I get that all the time. Like you should look into that, I, and all your I podcasts that. that you do, like yeah, maybe a life coach or something like oh, that. God, like oh, very, God. Um, I don't want the your, responsibility. Your, your voice and everything. Yeah, people I don't go to you, girl. I mean, I check Aww. in every day. I'm like, what's Candy's new video? You know, I don't watch all the shows. So I have to see like you know what I what I do watch. You know, so like, okay, I see, yes. see Dorit and Kyle on the screen today, so I'm gonna tune in. Yay. Like, I'm Yay. And then thank yeah, you so yeah. much, Emmanuel. Said Candy, you would, you would be a great executive producer. Oh, I really appreciate that. That's really sweet. I would I would love that. That's really, really sweet. But to Adam, to your monologue, soliloquy, <laughs> <laughs> I would say I think Dorit, the reason why she said the whole <clears throat> Kathy thing was because I think in her mind she was like, the gloves are off. And she knew that mm-hmm. by saying, well, to be honest with you, Kyle, I never hung out with Kathy with you. I held out with her on my own. And I was only getting upset because of stories that you told me happened in the past, basically being like, girl, I don't even know if you were telling me the truth at this point, right? She was putting her on blast is because I think she felt like gloves are off. And to be honest with you, turnabout is fair play because Kyle did the same thing to her when Kyle was like, 
I love Erica. Erica is so trustworthy. We're so close. She's a real friend. She's loyal. Knowing that Dorit was sitting right there being like, have you lost your damn mind? Because everything that Kyle was saying to Erica, in my mind, was a direct slight to Dorit. Because of where their friendship is at. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's yes. like, and I, so I think at that point, Dorit was like, well, gloves are off. Well, Erica's so loyal. Erica's your best friend all of a sudden. Well, guess mm. what? I only, I never hung out with Kathy with you. I disagreed with you and you told me stories about years ago. I was friends with her outside of you. It's like, oh, you want to do me dirty? I'm going to do you dirty right back. I think both of them were gloves are off. And I think that if I was Dorit sitting there and I'm hearing, and even Erica looked at her, she was like, oh yeah, okay, Kyle. Because like even Erica knew you're, this is a bunch of BS and you're trying to mm -hmm. jab at her. It was mm -hmm. Kyle's way of jabbing at Dorit. Because if yes. I'm in Dorit in that situation and Kyle is saying all these praises about Erica and then the next breath, she's like, I don't really know you like that, Dorit. When ah. they knew each other like that, you see ah. what I'm saying? Clutch my pearls. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, that was Kyle coming for her because mm -hmm. Dorit and Kyle have been way closer than Dorit and Erica. Yeah, I don't. Dorit I just don't. Like, I felt really like I felt like, like Kyle was was was. I don't know if it's gaslighting. I felt like she was playing. Yeah, in, it was like, gaslighting. In the people's people's like mm -hmm. you know her castmates' faces and our faces because she was like, I have given you my child's second birthday party. You know this, and she went on like six lists of things, and I was like. No, that's, you know, the, narr <laughs> the narration of what you want, what you look good. Exactly. And, and I do remember her going back and kind of, you know, Lisa Ren, I remember her own it. Oh, no, was that saying? Own, own it, own it. Was that Lisa no, Ren? No, Lisa Ren is own, own, it. It. Own, own, it. own it, own it, but, own it. But Kyle's, I, I remember Kyle is be honest. You have to be honest. Like, be honest, be honest. Be honest, like, be honest. Yep. I just hope that she, like we say, be accountable. I hope she seeks, seeks therapy, like, you know, Erica Jane, or how do you get empathy? <laughs> but it's just kind of like I hope she realizes that she hasn't been or she at least has been hard on her previous castmates to where it was like dang now I realize that I needed that break you know what I mean because I was doing it to my other castmates and I feel like that's what she's not doing and that's what's kind of like making me upset with just like Kyle we just need you off the screen because you want to <laughs> control what is being out there and then and going just going after Sutton and you know making her seem like an alcoholic and that was very that was actually detrimental. That was out of line. With, that was out with line. her children with her child, right? Getting the custody of her child. So I just felt like while you're really going through something and yes, it's serious and it's hard, like don't try to sit up there and act like we have you have given your whole life out there for display. You've gone through struggles and things too. Like now it's your time. And it, it was bound to happen because look, how long has she been on the show? And mm -hmm. I feel like for these housewives that have been on the show for a really long time, the time will come, you know, and I'm waiting for Miss Giselle's time over there on the other show, but, uh, you know, uh, um, it uh, will happen. Uh, it happens, right? Happened to Nini, <laughs> happened to, I feel like Alexia, happened with Alexia on my, um, Housewives of Miami. She was a fan oh, favorite God, for Alexia. so long. And one season she got really nasty and people didn't like her and she had to come back. And I just hope that, you know, the same thing with Kyle. We'll see if she comes back next season. Mm -hmm. you know, but we'll but see. but in terms of but the the but one one thing I want to mention about the reunion is that you know in the scene with with uh, Miss I'm a, uh, I'm a mani mani manipulative liar and I never speak the truth, aka okay, Crystal Minkoff. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't mind Crystal that much. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, I mean, I like, I'm like, what did Crystal do to you, Adam? Like, what I, did she do to you? I, I mean, she. I, I don't like I at all. I don't like do her. Do I don't like her at all. I mean, she. <laughs> I she does not. She does not own the second. She. She may own the company, but it's not the second biggest coconut company in the world. She would be a billionaire. Is that is just not fact? You know. I, I mean, she this hundred. Worth a hundred million. Yeah, yes, but that that just does not justify second largest because you know what that, I'm that, that, right that, that, I'm so the the We're coconut company is the coconut company Adam's is the biggest. Back. <laughs> like, like to to me, that there's just a lot of untruths. I mean, she made that Sutton was a, out that Sutton was this racist for two seasons in a row, and to me, the only thing I like about her is her house, and that should say a lot because uh, she has the best house on the show. <laughs> But aside from having the best house on the show, she 
uh, I like it when Candy pretty much shades her and says she pretty much is a, a friend of that's just magically got a tagline. And, <laughs> what uh, will you and, say, Candy? Uh, pretty much. Wait what, she, wait, what did I say? That you said that you always say that Crystal pretty much is like a friend of the show, but and I just I just added it that I just I just added it that she just magically has a tagline. That's that's how I like that part. And her tagline doesn't make any sense. Like she's actually dissing herself. Her tagline. Crystal makes no sense. Full stop. It's like they say wisdom comes with age, but I'm proving them wrong. So it's like, so you're not getting wiser as you age, or just because you're the youngest, you think you're smarter. But to me, it just like doesn't yeah. make any sense. To, yeah. to me, it just, I, I actually agree. It actually sounds like a diss. So like but I'm proving them wrong. But, but 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 to me, the only thing I like about her is that she annoys Kyle. And okay. aside from her house, and she annoys Kyle. That that's that's it. To me, there's nothing special about her. To me, it's the same as as Wendy Osifo. Uh, you know, quite frankly, oh, with no. our hop, with 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 our with our hop, uh, Potomac Nat, <laughs> aka Juan Dixon's wife, Giselle, and uh, <laughs> and 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 Wendy can go. As much as I hate Candice with a passion, she's more entertaining than most of the cast. Mm -hmm. And but but in in ter in terms of uh, Vanderpump rules with this lawsuit. Yeah, I mean it is oh. the beyond. You know, everyone. Um, I, I, I will lick the floor of Walmart, aka Brandy Glanville, Leah, Ra Rachel, Raquel, the Vey, whatever she goes by nowadays. I don't know. Um, she, all of them are just money grab. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. the, it, so are we team? Are we team uh, Sandoval and Ariana? Right. Well, For I that one, I'm Rachel. Team Ariana. Are we, are I mean, I, I kind okay, of, I kind of, I kind of, I just Ariana. want, I just want the judge just to say the lawsuit's dismissed. Goodbye. Um, yeah, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, be good with that. Yeah. But, but, but in terms of, in terms of these three lawsuits, I think the the one that's the most incriminating, I think the the Lear one. The, but mm -hmm. but also there's that other one with uh Manzo suing the production company and Brandy. Um uh, I think that one may have you know more credibility and what have you than I mean if you had to trust the word either Caroline Manzo or Liam Liam McSweeney, I think everyone would pick Caroline Manzo who's got a brain. And um, Yeah, but her and, case wasn't looking good either too, right? Like no. it was kinda looking because, yeah. well, but it's it's so. all it's all quite weird and and I think uh, Candy said it best earlier, which is you know you kind of have to have a nuanced approach when you look at things. But there are some you know things that are, aren't there are some things that aren't even worth having a nuanced approach because you can just read the BS from five hundred miles away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and you know I and it's just like I could have been born yesterday and I would have understood that. You know, uh, I feel like uh, sorry. Uh, and and it, it, but in, in terms of the lawsuits, what what do you think is actually going to happen? Do you think they're all going to be dismissed, or what, how how do you think it's going to work? Chelsea, you go. Okay, okay. Before I feel like the whole lawsuits are going to work, I, I kind of feel like Andy is eating black crow right now because mm -hmm. if you guys remember year years ago, um, I think he referenced like his shows like we're not loving hip hop or we're not yep. something. He referenced it like the VH1 shows. And I'm like, look how the cookie crumbles yeah. because <laughs> none of their cast members have ever sued, you yep. know, any of their managers or any of their production exactly. companies. And now look at you. You're you're skiing on the slopes, partying, have a good time. Now here's the thing. I don't I miss don't necessarily believe um everything in her, what she's claiming is not false, you know? Yeah. Um, but I just think like with you know, all these lawsuits going back to back, it feels it's just like Leah, you I I didn't watch when she was on, but I've watched interviews after this whole thing's gone on. And it's like you're giving the defense attorney everything they need for this to be thrown out too. Like yep. she said that she got, when she got the call to be a housewife, she actually relapsed that same week. And so it's a part of what we talk about being accountable. It's these yep. people being a human, being accountable. These housewives are human. You know what I mean? Like they have problems yes. in that area too. And she admitted, she did say, cause I think she asked her, well, why would you join? And she said, a part of me was in denial. 
she's Virgin now and she said that I could, you know, do it. And I should, she kind of put it on, oh, I want to buy my mom a house type of thing. But I think it was more than that. I don't think she was being 100% honest, you know? And yeah, like, I feel like her parents are pretty loaded. I, I think she, she, comes she shouldn't from, have, yeah. she shouldn't have. You think she, she comes from a family of means? I do. <laughs> but then, and then she said mm. it was that. And there was, um, oh, she, and this, this one wooed me. This one made me clutch my pearls too, because she tried putting it on this one thing where it's just like, and we all, we have, you can learn as humans, but, you know, being accountable and realizing what you can do to change, you know what I mean? And not putting it on someone else, like your problems and what you did, your mistakes. And she's trying to put her mistakes on production. I don't like that. She literally said, the interview person asked her, she's like, so you believe production should, should stop housewives when they're drinking too much. And I feel like her trying to pin that on you know, it's bad for it's it's uh, contributing 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 to alcoholics is completely false because you are a grown woman. There yeah. are the women are between thirty and sixty years old. So you mean to tell me you need to have someone to tell you to quit drinking because you're drinking too much and you're acting a fool? That would only be possible if they were one picking up their keys to go drive themselves somewhere, or they were physically. You could you could clearly see they're going to physically harm themselves or harm someone else. If she's just you know, falling off the chair, that's, that's all you. And she's literally trying to, and that's her part where I want to get into like, um, the psychology part of it. Cause I feel like she's in part of some like denial, you know, like where are, what I don't are, what think, are you so not they, seeing? I don't think Lee is in denial. I think she wants a money grab. I think, I think, I think she under, mm. I think she's very, very calculated and manipulative. I think she's just in it for a money grab because she also tried to blame production for why she didn't go back home to see her dying grandmother. And production came with the receipts and they were like, no, we told you if you need to go, you can go. And she chose to stay because she wanted camera time. But she honestly could be feeling like she's just, she could be feeling like she's right. And I, there, it could be two. It could be that she knows what she's doing, manipulating, but then the, the same part. Like, do you really honestly believe like what you're saying is true? Like, do you really? No, I think, think I think I think I think I think she is a liar. You think I think liar. I think two things can be true in certain people. Yeah, but I, wait, I'm talking about. I'm not talking in general. <laughs> I'm talking in particular. I think Leah McSweeney is a liar. I think she chose to stay in film because she wanted camera time. She was acting the whole time. We've never seen mm -hmm. the real Leah ever. Um, either. And I think that if Bravo was still messing with her, she would happily sign a contract to be back on the show. But for whatever yeah. reason, she's now fallen out with them. And so now she wants to jump on that lawsuit bandwagon to get a check because I think in her mind, it's like, same thing with Rachel. Well, I can sue you. If I lose, well, nothing because you're not going to hire me again anyway. But if I win, mm -hmm. I get a bag. That's what I really yes. think is going on here. But I think Leah is just a liar. I think I think she's lying, and I think she's very, very manipulative Leah and very, liar. very calculated. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I and think you get yeah, some on people. Here too. You know, you oh, get, hello, you look at Monica. Crazy. Monica. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, uh, no, no, Jinx. Not Monica. Jinx, no, Monica. girl. No, Monica. But how you said how how you were saying earlier, Candy? Like, um, can it be like their their mentality? They think like, oh, I have to cause drama. I have to be like look like an alcoholic on tv to keep my job you know what i mean like i could mm -hmm. see monica trying to come in there like what well, how to do that to you know make sure i stay that girl bye yeah but then you, you don't that, but that also out like that. but that also goes on perceived pressure again isn't enough to sue somebody else for absolutely not that's like you need to go to Chelsea and, okay, get, and, get, and get your head, you know what I'm saying? You need to go to a therapist and work out why you're seeking validation and you have all this pressure that doesn't actually truly even exist. Because again, look at mm -hmm. Candy Burris. She's never gotten crazy and out of pocket like that. She doesn't even drink and she has been the longest running, highest paid housewife. Literally. Boom. So that is literally the blueprint. And like other, sure, she's a favorite, but other people have been favored too. And they have, and they mm -hmm. are not the same. So, and that's another thing. Like, if you have a perceived pressure, again, that's on you to figure that out about yourself. If you yeah. are an alcoholic, that's for you to figure out what environments are safe for me and not safe for me. Yeah. But in but in terms of the lawsuits, do you think yeah. they're going to be dismissed? I hope so. Makes but what do you but so. what do you think the outcome is? Just like looking at it rationally, because I, I think they will. I feel they're pretty much 
maybe the Manzo one will have something going on, but I, I feel they will probably will all be dismissed. I think they'll be dismissed. But, with prejudice or without? This is, wasn't <laughs> Candace's with prejudice? Um, he, Michael Darby's? Was it like... It yeah, but that's but those were like... It was with prejudice with that one. I think that... I think they'll be dismissed with prejudice. Because the only reason why you dismiss without prejudice would be wrong jurisdiction or um, mm, okay. or you have a good case, but you need like more evidence or something like that, where it's like, we don't think this is BS. It's just not up to snuff yet for us to take it on legally. Whereas, like, yes. for example, what happened with Nini, it was dismissed um, without prejudice. And that's how you knew she didn't get any money. <laughs> because she okay. filed in the wrong jurisdiction okay. and because no that's the truth though because everyone's like oh nini got a bag and it's like no she didn't uh -huh. because if you got a settlement it would be dismissed with prejudice meaning it's settled meaning you mm -hmm. can't come back and re sue someone for the same exact thing that you just got paid for yeah. so the fact that hers was dismissed without prejudice means she didn't get any money and they blamed it on like, oh, she filed in the wrong jurisdiction. Like she filed in Georgia, but it was supposed to be New York or some crap. Um, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Some legal loophole where they're able to like, you know, dismiss it. You, but it was without prejudice. So she could sue them again, which means she didn't get anything. So, but, but, but the mm -hmm. thing, the thing with like all these people is that, you know, th this whole ideology that, that, you know, this network is so bad. But I agree with the heart, in a heartbeat, all these people would be, I mean, with Brandy Glanville, she would lick the floor of Walmart to return to Bravo. I mean, that was- Look what she did to Denise. It, 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 I know. I mean, I, I mean, if she can, you know, she, she, she is one of the most grim people ever. I mean, but, yeah, but with, 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 with Nini, she would, I mean, before Nini got got the boot, so I mean Nini was the highest paid. I mean she was getting two point eight five million dollars, which what because Atlanta always has loads of episodes that worked out to one hundred and forty k or whatever episode. It was it was it was a, a bloody ton of money, and uh, and you know if she got offered that tomorrow, she would, there's no way she would be like okay, I'm giving that a pass. Um, no, she was. She but, wanted to be on the new season of Roa coming out. But, 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 but. If, I mean, I don't get the what was the whole thing with that thing um, with the Instagram that happened three months ago, where Nini and Bravo refollowed each other, and I was like, so you, Nini said all these horrible things about you as a network and what have you, but now you're going to follow her. I don't know. It was weird. I'll tell but, you what that was. What was that? that then? Uh, I'll I'll tell you what that was. That was very smart strategy from Bravo's part because Nini, and this is again why these lawsuits are frivolous and need to be dismissed and these bitter betties need to go away. Because mm -hmm. Nini had just been on Bethany's podcast. And it was like, oh, Nini side the story, blah, 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 blah. She's going after Bravo. She's talking about Andy. She's da 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 da. She went off. She had just been on Bethany's podcast. So the moment that dropped, all of a sudden, Bravo then was refollowing Nini, and re Nini followed refollowed them, and then Nini deleted every single post she had up about her and Bethany, Bethany's podcast. So right there, that discredits every single thing that that Nini had to say because all of a sudden you want to be at Bethany's podcast slamming Bravo, but the moment they show you a little bit of attention, you delete everything with Bethany and you're refollowing each other because you think that maybe, maybe, maybe they'll take you back. I mean, I can't. But that, Bethany, but so. that is such strategy on Bravo's <laughs> part because it completely discredits anything that was said in that in that podcast. And yes. then now, did you know Bethany just came out saying that she's canceling re her rewrives podcast because it's yes. a disaster, and she's and she's literally made herself go from A tier to F tier. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, but 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 the thing but that just that... shows you how thirsty. But that shows you how um, thirsty Nini is. It's like, oh, they're horrible. It's so toxic. They're these, they're racist and there's these evil people. But the moment they slide into your DM, you up all of a sudden. 
<laughs> you know, you all back with them. It's like that friend that is dating a guy or not dating is friends with benefit with a guy who clearly just isn't that into her and just uses her. And then all day she's just, you know, complaining about him and crying about him and bashing him. And you're like, Oh, girl, you're better than that. Oh no. you're da, 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 da. And then the moment he hits her up at two o'clock in the morning, you up all of a sudden she's like in his bed. Mm. That's the, you know what I'm saying? That's the situation where it's like, you are pathetic. You have no leg to stand on. And is this person using you or are you just usable? Like, hello, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's really what the situation is. But bravo, chef's kiss, because the moment she did that, she discredited anything she had to say on, on, on that podcast. And then it also Literally. discredited Bethany. Literally. I mean, well, Bethany was discredited from the get-go. I mean, as soon as she was trying to jump on Rachel, I mean, she could just she could just go yeah, down. The... I, I, I mean, she... I'm I mean, not to, not to throw shady, but the but the quicksand could just suck her up after that. That was just such a stupid move. But anyway, it was but, really stupid. That's that's the problem. I I'm shocked because Bethany, who prides herself on being so smart and so business savvy, she clearly did not do any type of due diligence when she shackled herself to Rachel. Because I mean, Rachel really, in one foul sloop, destroyed Bethany's brand. I uh, I mean, I think not. I don't even know what it is, but you kind of get these certain personalities that just feel that they are, you know, standing on on top of the world. And yeah, with with, with Bethany, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Shark Tank, and she was on one of the episodes as a um, guest shark, and she was trying to say, uh, "I've." I've made money in multiple ways and I'm the best at this and I'm the best at that. And just so egotistical. Uh, and, and, it, and, and it's like, you know, there's a way of going about things and, um, but putting that to a side, I just got a, a notification on, uh, right on my iPhone from YouTube of, and it's a watch what happens live video. And oh my God, snooze fest Cynthia is looking for a moment. She, <laughs> she, 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 oh, no. she did, she did hey, a, Kimberly. she did a video. Um, I mean, not a video rather. She, she said on Watch What Happens Live that Denise wanted her to stir the pot at Kyle's weed dinner. And I mean, I don't even think Cynthia is worth Denise's time. Like, Cynthia, I, shut up. I mean, I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, the fact that, I, I mean, it's a million dollars less than what Nini was getting, but the fact that she was paid one point eight million a year to be a sleeping clown, I'm sorry, but like you know, even yeah. even a even a mermaid was more interesting than her. I'm sorry. Is Kenya yeah. more coming back to Atlanta next year? Yes, it's confirmed yes. for her and Portia. I mean, thank God, Kenya is the MVP. Thank God. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not a Kenya fan like that. I, I, hey, Kimberly. I mean, I, I mean, it, Kenya. It, it, I mean, she, she's the. I, I mean. Wait one no, second, Adam. Wait one second, Kimberly. Can you, can you hear us? Are you muted? muted? Oh no! Did you mute yourself, or did I accidentally do that? Oh no, her device isn't connected. Okay, go ahead. Um, Come I, back, Kimberly. I, I mean, I mean, not 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 to throw shade or, or to stereotype, but um, uh -oh. but, Ke, Ke, but but <laughs> but um. But but like like you, Candy, Kenya is one of these rare Americans that actually gets the British sarcasm, and mm -hmm. that's why. And and and, uh, that, and that was the funny thing about Beverly Hills is that you had all these people such as Adrian and Kyle and 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 they were just they would just be these absolute crybabies over sarcasm, and it was just like get a grip. You know? I mean, sar sarcasm, in my opinion, is the wittiest, best humor, and every it, it's it's up the sleeve of every Brit and and he, and even even Bethany it, when she featured as a um guest and once with Beverly Hills was trying to say that uh, she didn't like Lisa Vanderpump using sarcasm and it's just and and you know all these wet people I uh, I don't I I mean, e even even Sutton uh, uh, gets the, it, with her southern ways uh, understands the British sarcasm. Like I, I saw her. I I once saw her on an Instagram live, and she was with some random British guy that invite that she invited him to the live, and 
and they were being sarcastic and non-stop and it was just banter i mean that, that that's kind of to to me you know uh, i always hear from you know but at university i always had all these american people that saying you know oh i thought british people were reserved and very um you know um unrelaxed and just takes everything serious but you know with 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 the wit of sarcasm you know it it, it i i mean do you do you like the kind of the lisa vanderpump can you more shady sarcasm humor because that, that's my favorite i do i mean i i really like lisa vanderpump can you more mm she's i've never connected with kenya i don't dislike her i'm not like a kenya more like dislike her but there's something about kenya that i've always felt has been very fake and the way that she is up kyle richard's butt and how she hates other pretty black women to me she gives a lot of self-hate like jealous black girl hate like the way she treated cynthia was disgusting i think she's always been jealous of candy um, the way she treated Ebony was disgusting. The way she treated Garcelle was disgusting. It's like if you are another beautiful, black, accomplished woman, Kenya, to me, feels very threatened by you. And she's a very much a pigmisha, in my opinion. And so I, I never really rock with Kenya like that. Just how when she was she people. nasty to Garcelle? Um, when Garcelle first came on the show and remember the whole thing with Garcelle and Kyle and Kyle being like, you don't, uh, oh, Garcelle didn't pay her ticket for the charity. And it was literally just like an mm. admin mix up. It was like sent to like a, the wrong address, something so stupid. And yeah. Garcelle was like, well, you know, why did you have to say that in front of like every, you know what I mean? She felt like called out. And then she's mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm the only black woman on this cast. And like, as a black person, there's a stereotype that we don't pay our bills and there's all this stuff going on. And she had a really good civil normal conversation with kyle about it and kenny was like tweeting and was just like oh don't play the race card and you're good kyle and i got your back and blah 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 just very much like kissing up to like to to kyle in that situation where it's like you didn't really have to say anything like if you if you're not supporting garcelle i get it but like you would also don't have to say to another black woman you're playing the race card when she clearly wasn't just because you're threatened by her. And then it came and then it turned out that Kenya's publicist is Garcelle's ex-husband's girlfriend. Wow. God. And he and he <laughs> was sleeping with her husband, allegedly, when they were still married. She has been his girlfriend for 10 years. At this point, probably 12. She's been a girlfriend of for over a decade. Wow. And Garcelle's boys are 15. So you do the yes, math. Yes, 15. Yeah. So you do the math. Ooh, it's giving like Anne Marie when saying? she was get, going at Dorit when Dorit at was the talking reunion? with Garcelle. Oh, at the reunion. And my God. She was God. like, I'm not done speaking. I'm, I'm not, not done speaking. I'm not done, I'm not done speaking. speaking. I'm, not done I'm a black woman. I couldn't even I'm listen so to that. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. And I was yelling at my TV. Yes. <laughs> I was like, please I stop talking. Marcella, you don't collect her all the way together. All the way. That, that kind of like. More, also cringe Marcella? was when, yeah. was when 8.5. When 8.5 was trying to say that, that, that Fat Boy Kemsley's wife was her biggest supporter. She was like, because you, when Garcelle was spelling it out to Jaree about the whole, you know, calling her a Karen and what have you. Uh, you had 8.5 trying to defend Dorit saying, you know, she she supported me as a... Uh, um, yeah, it, this one. I mean, that oh. was just like, I'm sorry, it but like, go, so uh, go to bed. You're already a sleeping pill. You might as well just go to bed. Like, I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. But, but, so but, Rena, Rena Benina says, what do you think about Crystal versus Anna Marie? I'm team Crystal 100% on this one. Anna Marie needs to just bow out altogether. But what do you what do you think, Chelsea? Then go, Adam. Anna, <laughs> Anna Marie has to go. Anna Marie has to go. There's there's no, I think on top of, so it was the pick me moment at the reunion that just kind of like mm -hmm. sealed the deal. But the case for me was obviously the esophagus thing, but um, that's, that's between Sutton, but between her and Crystal, it was that she literally lied on Crystal saying that Crystal was the one that said Sutton had the eating disorder. And I'm like, if you join Housewives, they obviously watch the show, right? And so she, to me, I'm like, how did you not know that Crystal has an eating disorder? So for her to lie and say that Crystal 
Anne, for Anne Marie to lie on Crystal and say that Crystal said that, um, that just totally lost me. And she just, I don't, I don't, I just do not care for her. Do not care for her. She has to go. I hope, I hope they mm-hmm. listen. I hope some Bravo executives listen to your stuff. Me too. Because you be on point, girl. And we just ah! can't do Anne Marie. I'm sorry. We need another friend of, but it just can't be her, y'all. I agree. <laughs> what about you, Adam? Okay, with uh, both of them can go. Quite frankly, yeah. it, I, I mean, Crystal is a manip- manipulative person that never tells the truth. But with eight point five, I mean, I mean that whole fight to me was just some petty garbage. I mean, both 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 of them can can get can get the sacked card. I mean, mm-hmm. I I I all I I feel that to me, I get it that. You know, in in sequence, she only joined. She joined the show a year after Sutton Garcelle, but 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 I, I I don't I don't think the friendship with with those two. Um, I feel that Sutton and Garcelle have obviously a general friendship, but I don't think yeah. the crystal thing is is real personally. And and uh, and but but with with eight with eight point five, mm-hmm. I mean. I, I was watching the episode when the whole esophagus thing and my mum walked past that day to television and she was like I thought this show was about wealth not some person that is trying to be some preachy person <laughs> and she was just like what is this and yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and and to me I, I, the funniest thing was uh, Lala Kent um she, she again is, is, is someone who who gets the sarcasm vibe and love her. Um, she did an Instagram live of that, and she was talking about eight point five, and she she was like, "Why is this even her business to talk about? You know, it's not talking about about her 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 as a person. You're just talking mm-hmm. about a part of her body." And she said, and she was like, it, it, "It's not her face. It's not it's not her boobs. It's not." whatever she just said you picked the esophagus and you know the whole uh mouthpiece vibe i mean out of the two of them you know put it this way i'd rather walk walk past um lying crystal on the on the street but i hope they both don't come back they i kind of like crystal i don't i don't believe a word she says half the time (laughs) i'm sorry uh she uh she she uh, I mean, to me, her, you know, she might as well have been Raquel's intern. Uh, I don't know. Uh, she, in terms of lies, they're, they're pretty much uh, alike. Yeah. And, maybe, a, uh, maybe a friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and Welcome, she, Bambina she, and Kimberly. To, I can't to me, hear me. Hi. Hi. Yeah, right. now we can hear you. Uh, uh, but to, but to me, I, I, just, I just feel that both of them need to go. I mean, as much as I hate to say it, because I dread, I dread her after what she did did to Lisa Vanderpump. I'd rather Kyle be on the screen than eight point five or Lion Crystal. Again, as much as I hate to say it, but if two, if if I could fire three, Kyle would have gone um, to me as well. But in in terms of these two, I just think they're weak. I mean, you know, with eight point five, there was a reason why she only came in the sixth episode. She wasn't worth our time, and with with Crystal, I mean, as as Candy said, she's only ever given this friend of energy. She's really just a she's really just a friend with a magical tagline. And to me, you know, aside from having the most expensive house on the show, she delivers nothing but lies. <laughs> um, yeah, I asked that question because people have been so harsh on Anne Marie. And yeah. Crystal. Um, and I like all the ladies on the cast a lot. I actually really like Crystal. I really like Anne Marie. I really I at first I didn't really like Anne Marie that much, but mm-hmm. she grew on me. Um, and I feel like she's she's fighting a battle that I think Crystal knows that she's fighting in healthcare. Um Crystal gave me the energy that she was kind of jealous that she was in healthcare and made it to a certain point in her career and made a certain amount of money for not needing as much as education as a doctor. And I 
Chris, I have met a lot of people like Crystal um, from LA that are kind of, you know, pretentious Mm -hmm. and think that a degree equals your intelligence and your importance in the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Right. Um, That's not the case. And I, and again, I'm not saying anything bad about Crystal, but some people just live that, that life. And I think that um, Anne Marie, you know, she fights a battle as a nurse. Like she is able to do a lot of the same things a doctor can do, but she's not a doctor. And I don't think she ever claimed to be one. I think she just may use like simple layman terms just to help someone who's not in the field to understand it. And Crystal ran with that. And I think that that is a disservice to Anne Marie because she does have a very important job. She shouldn't be, you know, felt like she's way down in the dirt. She's worth, you know, I don't, I don't take kindly to people who insult people who, who work noble positions in the world. Uh, You know, she has a, you know, you shouldn't insult her. She does a job that most people wouldn't do. She risks her life every day. Um, And she takes care of people that nobody else wants to take care of. Mm-hmm. She yeah. does, you know, and you shouldn't. You should make it seem like she's, she's, you know, nothing. I didn't. I didn't like that about Crystal. You know, I don't think she needs to kiss her ass, but I didn't like how she was trying to make it seem like she she was not as important as she is to society because she is important to society. Yeah, I don't. I didn't take. I don't know. I didn't take. I didn't take Crystal that way. Like, I didn't take her as trying to say that Anna Marie isn't as important because she's a nurse versus a doctor. I think what Crystal was saying was, when I met you, you told me you were a doctor and it turns out you're not. And now subsequently, you've done A, B, C, D, E, F, G to make me not like you. And so I think it was more of that. I think that if it had been an isolated situation, it would have came off differently. But Anna Marie did a lot of times on camera, she would say something and then the person would be like, well, wait, what did you say? And she'd be like, I never said that. Like with the whole eating disorder thing, it's on camera. Anna Marie said, "Uh, Sutton has an eating disorder. And Crystal's like, wait, don't say that. And she goes, I didn't say that. You said that. Like that's on camera. So I think it's like all of the things piling up and then her going after Sutton about the esophagus and her having a medical degree and all of that stuff. I think it all piled up. I I get what you're saying about sometimes people can be like pretentious or whatever, but I personally didn't take Crystal issue with Anna Marie as in, I think less that you're less than because you're a nurse than, than being a doctor. I didn't, I, I, took, I personally didn't take it that way. Yeah. I took it that way. Mm-hmm. I took it that way. Um, and yeah, I agree also, with with I, EI rule. Like no, it, like they weren't disrespecting CRNAs. It was it was kind of Anna Marie's like deflection for it, like because she she literally that was said a reach. Sutton, that was she a literally reach. said to Sutton, she was like she was like you and you don't eat. And Sutton said, I don't. She's like I do eat. And Anna Marie was like, I never said you didn't. But like that's literally what she said. It was just so, and then Anna Marie coming in as like Kyle's mouthpiece, going hard for mm-hmm. Crystal, going hard for Sutton. I think she didn't do her. I think she was set up to fail. She didn't do herself any um, favor. She did herself a disservice. She exactly. Well, she did Sutton herself a disservice. Wasn't even that yeah. About Sutton wasn't even really that upset. She didn't bring it up in the reunion. She was just kind of was like, "Listen, I don't have an eating disorder. That's not." Well, true. she did. She said. She said she I didn't like her being talking about behind yeah. my back. That's what. Yeah, said, she did say that. She said she didn't care about the esophagus. She cared that you were saying that you were talking about me behind my back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's the problem with with eight point five to me was that there kind of was this communication issue and I don't know it it was uh, as Sutton had said on the after show I don't even know who you were talking to like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kimberly, ahead, do you want to say something? Kimberly, you want to share? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree about Anne Marie a hundred percent in terms of she shouldn't lie if she doesn't want to be perceived as a liar, and she most likely was Kyle's mouthpiece. Um, I didn't find her very likable, but um, I just wanted to comment more on Andy. I have yeah. watched a Watch What Happens Live or a few of them, and I was really disturbed by him encouraging, like with 
eye movements and gestures, facial mannerisms and vocal expressions. Mm -hmm. Um, People, he's encouraging people to honestly dislike or make bad commentary or bad, have, you know, have negative thoughts about um, Sandoval. Of course, no one needs help for that, but uh, it's worse. I mean, it's, you know, he, I feel like um, he's making things worse for continuing the situation. It's, Sandoval's still an employee and this was like rather recent Mm -hmm. so I I was really disgusted at that I thought geez you're still his he's still an employee he's still working for you Um, I thought that was very weird for a boss and that's why I kind of see he doesn't work for Andy Kern he works for Lisa oh what Sandoval's not under Andy's control it's Lisa Vanderpump Oh, well, I mean, isn't he kind of overseeing the show no, or no, no, not at all? Not no. Vanderpump Rules. Not Vanderpump oh, I didn't Rules. know that. No. no it's, um, okay, so it's, Lisa Lisa Vander- it's Lisa Vanderpump, Ken Todd, and Alex Baskin. Oh. And, Hills and that was a production. big reason why um, Lisa and Andy sort of had a falling out because Andy wanted to be an executive producer on Vanderpump Rules and she said no. Exactly. It's her, it's her I'm glad and, she said no. I'm glad it's her she said no. <laughs> and um, Alex Baskin show, and Alex Baskin either is or was a big producer. On, he is. He is. He is still is. He, okay. He, he still is for Beverly Hills. Oh, okay, guys. Yeah. I, it's the one that yeah, Kyle's I friends with. Didn't understand yeah. how a boss could do that, and I thought it was. It made me disgusted. It's still inappropriate, I mean, though. It's yeah, still yeah. Inappropriate. I agree. It's still he's inappropriate. Still, he's still in a position of power at Bravo. And the and the I think the biggest perception is that he probably is a producer on Vanderpump Rules, and if nothing else, That's he is the producer and host of Watch Happens Live, but he's not a producer on Pump Rules. Okay, thank you guys. That clears that matter up for me. But everything else, I I, I kind of uh, I kind of like Crystal. Um, I think she's you know getting better. I know Adam, you hate her. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I am learning some different perspectives, you know, from Adam. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, I, I feel like she could do better. I feel like she, if she would focus more on, on her positive side, I think she's kind of fun. She's got a fun side. I, I saw a few times. I'm like, gosh, bring that more. Bring that out more. <laughs> Her jokes are funny about, I think she made some commentary about her nipples <laughs> and it, it made me laugh. And I thought that that's, you know, that's the kind of the fun stuff we want to see humor, glamor. Um, you know, I don't know. I just, I thought it was kind of like she was feeling, uh, feeling her own in a way on one of the episodes I saw instead of, you know, crying over her stuff, <laughs> her issues. Mm-hmm. But um and then I would love to see Erica just leave the show. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why do we have to constantly be forced to watch that woman? Every mm-hmm. time I see her, I feel like the victims, I, I see the victims every time I see her. I just can't stand to watch her. It's like um, she's being rewarded for bad behavior. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what else. That's that's pretty much all I have, I, I guess. I don't really have much more to add to this. I think you guys are doing a great job. I just wanted to say that about Andy and the, yeah. the legal. I think, I think the producers really changed direction with um, the Bravo shows to a real negative type of thing where they gang up on people. Like, they think people like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I don't. I don't really like that. I don't like to see people getting, you know, ganged up on it. Really, to me, it's awful. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, ever since ever since the whole season nine facade of the cast being absolutely disgusting to Lisa Vanderpump and the whole Monique yeah. Samuels in season five mm-hmm. that yeah. of our hop, those two, ever since those two events, you know, obviously there's been other outbursts in the cut past on all the franchises but ever since the Monique and Lisa Vanderpump situation I think everyone has read the lines and just you know you could read even even an eight-year-old could read the room of that I mean the but 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 with 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 Andy Cohen I mean you know he 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 said you know this whole PR um, thing I'm not a you know, I don't run Bravo as a network, but that regardless, he has a big say. I mean, 
the guy is getting reportedly 10 to 15 million a year from the network and you know he has this uh, as Kathy Griffin dubs this low budget talk show and but you know I think I think it speaks to what we were talking about before actual power versus perceived versus perceived power exactly Mm -hmm. because I agree because the perception is Andy Cohen is the king of Bravo. He's the executive. He's the man in charge. He hires and he fires. That is the perception. Whether it's true or not, perception really creates reality, right? So, you know... And television. And television. (laughs) So if that is what the perception is, then that's what the feeling is. Like, oh, I can't piss off Andy. You know? Because if I do, then something's going to happen. Or I just have to grin and bear it. But it also goes back to what I was saying before. And I want you guys to think... I. Do I think Andy Cohen has been inappropriate 100%? But I still, and maybe I'm naive, but I don't think he's predatory. Like, I don't think he's, like, abusing his power. And these people really feel like I'm in fear of, like, my life and my body. Like, I I don't, I think he's inappropriate. I think he's a bit sloppy and he can clean it up a bit. But I don't think of Andy Cohen as, like, a predator. Well, um, no, he's not. I don't think he's a predator. I don't think he's a predator, but I think he's a mean person and in, in deep he, down. Yeah, he is in a way a, a predator because yeah. what I wanted to say Ooh. is like it's for Leah, who's someone mm-hmm. who had a past. She had a you know a drug addiction. She had she's had a past, so she knows certain secret languages that people who have that type of past know. And she knows going on reality TV is going to probably trigger a lot of those cravings and things like that. And I feel like it's not necessarily fair because it's not a secret that Andy, I mean, I don't know. I never did drugs with him, but you know, it's not a secret (laughs) that he, he takes, you know, he enjoys a certain lifestyle. So it's like, you want to like, it's like Leah wanted to join the Bravo gang and she knew that in order to join the Bravo gang, she would have to get jumped in. And now she's mad because she got injured during that situation. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I look but, at but, it. But even in that, though, how does that make Andy a predator? That doesn't make well, Andy a predator. Just because because no, thing is, just because no. Andy likes, just because Andy either likes or has a, a reputation or allegedly, because I'm not saying he does or doesn't. Let's just say he has a reputation of wanting to party. That doesn't, how is that a predator on Leah? Well, a well, yeah, predator like, on you a know what I mean? Type of pers- a predator on a certain type of person. But uh, but like, a predator, but a predator has to be the person who's going after the prey where it seems like that's not the case. Like I don't even think Andy and Leah had that much of No, I don't think he cared for her. I don't an, think they ever hung out on the show. At all. Yeah, mm-hmm. they I don't think that they had much of an interaction. The reason why it's making headphones with or headlines with Andy and Leah is because Leah said, Oh, Andy likes to do nose candy with his favorites, and that's how you get favor. But I mm-hmm. but that's even been debunked. He's loved Candy Burris, and Candy Burris doesn't even drink. So it's like that's I don't think that's true either. So it's like I don't that's no, why but- I don't see I don't see mm-hmm. Andy as a predator. I don't think he goes after these women and does things just because Leah and I don't even think that what she is saying is true I think she's lying I think she's lying because she wants a payout but let's just pretend she's telling the truth and she thinks she has to do all of these horrible things in order to be on the show you are a grown-ass woman maybe pick a different job if I had to pick up crap all day long and smell like crap all day long to have a job guess what I'm picking a different job (laughs) <laughs> so the problem is, how is Andy a predator when she is seeking money and fame? Well, the and thing she's is, willi- and she's also, willing, and she's willing to pick up crap to do it allegedly. But, but I don't Andy even believe also, that when it comes to Leah. Andy, Andy isn't necessarily the employer, but you do have to keep in mind he is kind of playing the employer or Bravo. They do employ people. So, but how? But how? But uh, house, I understand. But how is he? But how is? Have but to how? Have a certain type I of, guess. I guess. Make it very, very simple for me. Like if I was five years old, how is Andy Cohen a predator to Leah? Because he, in a way, writes her check. But he doesn't. It's not in a way. He either he well, doesn't. No, he doesn't he write her has, check. He doesn't he write her check. Her, but he. But he's. He doesn't he write is, her check. He no. He doesn't. It's not coming out of his bank. Wait. Account. Can I ask no. a question? Yeah. About go ahead. This about him. Thank you. Um. Do, because he's on the Watch What Happens Live, uh, shows after the episodes. Yeah, the low budget talk show. Yes. 
yeah, people perceive him to be the boss in a way. It's just the perception. And he he instigates and causes people to like try to he tries to make people feel a certain way. Like, for instance, Candy on your show, mm-hmm. you're very fair. You're so fair to people. If you don't yeah. really particularly agree with them, you don't disparage people or make like try to sway them in another way, even though you're saying your opinion. But Andy, he does it differently. He really makes faces and, Mm -hmm. you know, and makes these um, gestures and voice, like, you know, voice inflections where Mm -hmm. this is a pub, this is on the public, you know, television worldwide, I guess, you know, maybe worldwide. I don't know. No, we don't uh, get, we don't get it in the UK. We just watch everything on, on, uh, on demand. Okay. Keep because, going. Uh, you, it's, it's just it's like how you guys have Peacock. We have people. a thing called Hey You. Wait, keep keep going, Kimberly. He's shaping public opinion, and mm-hmm. he's he's also like coercing people to be hostile to his to people on the show, and he's like a manager in some way of that. Watch what happens live. So yeah, he's some, the producer and yeah, host. Yeah. So so like when these people are being disparaged it just it seems like it's a manager disparaging the employees i guess i guess he isn't technically but it really feels like he is some type of management well he he I, is i would say he, that he is he's he's the uh, on watch what happens live not on some of the other stuff but i agree he does have this perceived power and he is the executive and host of watch what happens live 100 percent. and i also do agree that he does give in inappropriate and weird and sometimes like not synonymous with like the collective conscious things like he gives like weird eyes and weird gestures and all of that stuff i agree and a lot of the times i don't really agree with what he's saying a lot of it is one, I don't think he's actually prepared. Like, I don't think he watches the shows. I don't think he's reading um, uh-huh. these cards beforehand. Like, he's basically showing up and just reading the cards in real time. I don't think he does any preparation for Watch What Happens Live or for the reunion. So, uh-huh. one, I think that he no. just A, is not prepared. This is not in defense of him. I think it's really an unprofessional and inappropriate so he's actually reacting in real time with his weird goofy self you and all inappropriate because that's just him in the moment but i do but i think that that's one bucket where it's like yeah andy like on watch happens live maybe rein it in a bit but again to say that he should be sued and that he's a predator, I don't think that's predatory behavior in the context that we're talking about. Right. I mean that like sexually predatory or forcing people to drink or forcing people to do drugs, like that's more of the predatory stuff. I get sometimes the the hostility. Stuff he does on Watch What Happens Live, it's icky and it is a little bit of hostility, but like I mean like an actual like predator yes predator. i understand because like i don't think about... you're going to be able to sue him because he gives a weird look on watch what happens live what about the fact that or like, even if he was think... a, even if he was paying even if he was paying leah mcsweeney if he actually was paying her i still don't believe that justifies like he was praying or he's the reason why she relapsed during the time exactly that she, was yeah, that's right. she still has point. to yeah. be accountable yeah, that's, that's not that's still deflecting and that's able she's literally pointing the finger it's not my fault i relapsed i'm a grown woman i control my actions and where i am placed but it's his fault because you know i felt the pressure to drink that's completely unfair and I, that's where i feel bad for him because yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do think that there are some true statements because, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. So I do think that he has slid some slopes, but I don't think that he, he was preying on her for her to say predator and to say that the producers need to be the ones to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. You need to get yeah. out of here. We cannot teach our, our little kids that. Like, you need to be yeah. responsible for yourself and your actions. And like you said, if you don't like where you work and it smells like poop, you need to leave. Yeah, like, Chelsea, like say, Chelsea, like bring up the lawsuit. Exactly, Chelsea. like, if I, like, like if I'm an alcoholic and I choose to work at a brewery, and then I just and then I decide to drink the beer, am I now going to sue my bosses? Yeah, right. yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, you think, I, like, think, I think everyone should do that. Do you know what uh, I mean? And it's and, and and it's the same because 
at the end of the day, it cuts both ways. Sometimes we 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 think of these reality shows and these personalities, and we can enmesh with them or identify them or be over familiar with them. But at the end of the day, it still is a workplace, and these people still have their own autonomy. So as a workplace, yes, there does need to be boundaries. There does be, need to be more appropriateness. But at the end of the day, these people are not slaves. These people are not being forced to be reality stars. These are things that they're not just wanting, but they're seeking out and seeking voluntarily. out voluntarily voluntarily yes. to the point where these people are doing a lot of shady stuff because they think that's what they have to do to be on reality TV. Nobody's forcing them to do it. And if, and if you want just fame and money, start TikTok, start, I don't well, know, start YouTube a podcast, even. go on YouTube. Like there's so many ways to get what you quote want in this world. Yeah, but we're not because, in the 1920s. But just because you're, they're, to me, they're, they're having like temper tantrums. Like these lawsuits are temper tantrums. It's like, mm. you're not doing what I want anymore. So I'm going to sue you. Wah. Like that's basically <laughs> what they're acting like. Like I, because that's again true. with Leah, it's like if Bravo, I I would bet my bottom my bottom dollar if Bravo said, "Hey Leah, we want to bring you back for the next season of." I'm talking about pre lawsuit. We want to bring you back for the next season of New York. I bet you my bottom dollar she would be right there, the same way she mm -hmm. was on two seasons of Roni, the same way she or was on Ultimate trip. Girls Trip. You know, it's like you don't do three years of something. She did three exactly. Seasons. She did three it, seasons, two on Roni, one on Ultimate Girls Trip, and then because they're not asking you back, all of a sudden it's like, well, it's your fault. I'm not sober anymore. Yeah, I mean, you she see, was trying you know? to say money was. She was trying to say money was the main reason for me coming back, but that's not. A, you know, I agree. If, so, if, some, if something doesn't thought. add up, it doesn't add up. Like if it, And then she was know. also saying she she said publicly she made more money on fans only. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Than the, she the, ever. Yeah. Than she <laughs> ever. Did, than she ever did on housewives so if it's just for the money then like you are already making because she said she was making thousands of dollars whether that's true or not i don't know but it's like you're making all of this money on fans only that's something you can do privately whether you are sober or not you that's 100 percent on you then why are you seeking to come back to a place that you're claiming is so toxic and is so dangerous to your sobriety and andy cohen is such this big predator when you yourself said you're making more money being your own boss on fans only it's because you're addicted to the fame it's because on fans only yeah you're making money but it's only to the people buying your photos or your videos but you want to be on tv you exactly. want to be famous. It's, it's voluntarily. You want to I be mean, in the headlines. And that's really what it's about. And what pisses me off is that there are so many people in this world who truly don't have the money or the means or the support or the resources to get help when they are actually being there are predators out there. They are being abused. They are being mistreated. They are being treated fairly, whether it's coerced into sex, coerced into drugs hostile work environments and they have to go to work to feed their family to feed themselves and yeah, they exactly. don't have the means that these people have the mere fact she brought this lawsuit to be honest with you yeah. is a privilege and a luxury that the majority of the people in this world do not have i mean exactly and, uh, and as you were saying earlier Candy, these people exactly like, and as you were saying earlier with leah she, I, I i just did some research she uh, in, until she was fourteen, she was based in the Upper East Side. So she, you know, no, Leah so, has so, Leah has money. I'm telling you, her family. Yeah, has exactly. Money. I mean, if you're based in the Upper, if you could live in the Upper East Side for fourteen years before they re relocated to a different state, and then they I mean, went, you're, you're she cozy. Was about, she went to all these private schools and blah blah blah. A lot but, of Leah was a bunch of BS. Exactly, but but in ter in terms of this whole debate about. Um, as Kimberly was saying, you know, him having favorites and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I I feel that, you know, you know, as an employee, you know, they, they, they say, you know, one shouldn't be biased and what have you. But I kind of feel with this dynamic kind of it, it kind of is there, like it's kind of a given, like, um, like these things are going to happen. And, you know, in, in terms of him, I mean, I I think he's a bit of a narcissist personally. I don't necessarily believe he's a predator. Or that he does the snow, but uh, but in in, ter in terms of you know people, um, I I didn't like, for example, how he was trying to gaslight and 
be yeah. be this be this horrible person to Monique on the season five reunion. He was up Giselle's ass. I don't know why, but for some reason he found no, I, her, her ass attractive. But, no, I but agree. It, with, I agree with you, and I agree with Kimberly. I do but, like. I do think Andy Cohen is problematic and inappropriate, and I do think it might be time for him to like. He needs to maybe go on a pause. I but think he won't. He's a little he, out of that control. Won't he's very sloppy. He he does a lot of weird stuff. I agree at the reunion and on Watch Happens Live. I agree a hundred percent. But I think both things are true. I think that these lawsuits are frivolous and they're money grabs for bitter people who want their fifteen minutes. And then I also think Andy Cohen needs to like clean it up a lot and really get it together because he does have a lot of things that are problematic about him too. He, he but really I don't. Does. But I don't think it warrants lawsuits. I I, I agree. I mean, in ter in terms of. I mean, e even the whole thing when Nini was trying to sue him and the network saying that, you know, she playing victim. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I, you, you know, uh, uh, but but I think the the problem with these people like Leah mm -hmm. is that they they're kind of these wannabes, and you know, as we've saying that they voluntarily signed up. No one said, okay, if you if you quit the show, you're going to lose your apartment tomorrow or something i don't know with her she she was uh you know they, they didn't fi fire her after her first season they gave her a contract she did she could have turned that down and yeah uh, and but i feel i feel with, with these kind of wannabe people uh leah well i guess you could use alliteration lion leah in my opinion yeah. and and lion crystal is that the these kind of a wannabe you crystal. know what 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 was um uh you know like li lion lion crystal lion leah i mean but but in terms of these <laughs> wannabes so <laughs> uh, it, it, in, ter in terms of these wannabes they're not on the same level as your candies your kyle's and your Teresa's. in the sense that those three people for example mm -hmm. they're not they're not they're not begging and kissing andy's ass they have relationships with the production companies they've built them and it doesn't, you know, with with Teresa, for example, when she went to prison, they actually the production company, um, even Andy Cohen confirmed it that the production company said we're not doing anything until she's out of the jail. And with Candy, even though there've been flops and some crappy version of Fan Pump Rules, she was able to get a check and do her own stuff. But and I think with, they also go with people's fan bases. Like Teresa yeah. has a huge fan base. Candy yeah, but she, she's managed that by mm -hmm. being the star of the show. I'm, I'm saying that in terms of these three people, mm -hmm. they're not up his ass. Whilst your your likes, I mean, even Crystal. They don't need was, him. Yeah, they don't need him because they're they friends they with Kyle. Friends. As a as Candy and I have said, you know, she's having these producers to her house. You know, and no one's going to Wendy Osifo's house. You know, from production, they're not going there for drinks or parties. You know, like they they, they have their own dynamic. And Why are they going to Giselle's house? Because how does she get such the end? I mean, they did. They did. They did. They, they did. 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 I mean, aside from Karen being first I chair, that whole reunion season was a bit effed up. But you know, but in in ter in terms of Karen, uh, I mean, uh, that was well deserved. I mean, Karen Huger MVP in my opinion. But but it, but I, I feel you know the the wannabes, your the, your Leas, your Crystals, your uh, I I mean Wendy Osifo, you you name it. Uh, uh, the, they, if you're gonna they, say Wendy Osifo, you need to say NECA too, because I can't let you do. Yeah, she, I, 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 I mean I NECA. Let, let you do Wendy like that. Like, I know Wendy being a little funny this season, but I still love. No, her. I'm, I'm sorry, but Wendy, I mean, all, all, all three of them I named are sleeping pills to me. You know, I'd, ra I'd, ra I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather put the TV on mute than, oh, than ever listen to their voices again. Not but, sleeping pills. But, but, but I, I, I mean. But but in ter but in terms of the the Candies, the Kyles, and Teresas, all Leah wanted you know as Candy said, if Leah got a check tomorrow, she's not going to reject it. You know these people are wannabes, and they want to be your your Candies or your or your Kyles or your Teresas, and uh, and th but they're not there. And you know but you you know you have your 
but I, I feel what what I find interesting just on a side note is okay. when but when Potomac is over, you what is like I, I'm I don't know if it is that of a big thing in your guys' radar, but like after the shows are are finished or this and they've ravaged, we've got this huge rate waiting time for you you jersey and this flop of dubai you know do do you guys really care for the summer house and all this stuff you know i i i will personally still be watching vanderpump because that's one i i i love the show but in, in terms of vanderpump in terms of van after van when when potomac uh, and all that stuff wraps what shows are you actually going to watch that's what i'm curious I'm watching Summer House. Okay. Is it Martha Vineyard? Is it Martha Vineyard Candy with the black hat? Yeah, Martha. I'll there? watch that when it comes back. Yeah. That one's coming in March, like the end of March. And then right after the next, the following week, I think, is New Jersey. So we're kind of going to have, I guess, just Vanderpump all of uh, March. April. And Do April. Oh, dang. Who's coming back to New Jersey? Uh, Teresa, Snooze Fest, Melissa. Oh, okay. uh, Margaret. Margaret uh, and what's uh, the other one? Irrelevant. Um, Jackie, Jackie get into it? Uh, oh god, don't even mention her. She needs to go. <laughs> um but 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 um you've got Teresa's Ask Licker, Jennifer, and obviously Dolores. Oh what? I no, like Jackie. Dolores. You are cracking no, me. No, no ja ja Jackie Jackie Dolores. switched sides to, to stay on the show. I'm sorry. She 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 is phony and I, I can't wait for I'm her Jackie? to get Jackie, Jackie, Yeah, she is so Jackie, she is a phony. Like Teresa. I love no, she, Jackie. Not her and Teresa are good. Yeah, the pho her the pho Teresa, is the her and Teresa are girl good because I think it turned I think she realized what a snake Margaret was. No, 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 no. she's just she, she's just an yeah, absolute right fake. Hand. She's just a faker. But I'm sorry. She, I don't like Melissa. I, mean, I, I, I don't like I Melissa mean, either. I, I mean but Melissa. I've been I mean, on she's for... it's just a Barbie wait, Adam, doll. Wait, Adam. I've been on for three hours and I'm hungry. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what are you having for our, Let's do our last thoughts and we'll start <laughs> from the bottom up. So, Kimberly, then Bambina, then Chelsea, then Adam. All right. Well, I just wondered how you guys feel about Vanderpump Rules where Tom Sandoval, they're still treating him like a pariah, like he's lower than the scum of the earth. I mean, yes, he did a bad thing, but do you think the the treatment that he's getting ongoing is really warranted? I'm just astounded by it and disgusted too, uh, because they're all cheaters. I I agree. I feel like it's an enough is enough. Like, like I feel like okay, he cheated. He has narcissistic tendencies. Okay, let's move on. Like, I feel like they're beating yeah. a dead horse and like right? I'm ready for it to sort of have different stories, different things going on. And I get uh, I get it, Ariana, he hurt you. But like at the end of the day, like, She's yeah, he cheated, best, best but life. like, okay. She's yeah, it's better like, off without him. I mean, she was a mad, I think with, with Tom, I think, you know, I, I kind of agree, you know, enough is enough. I mean, the, as much as I feel bad for Ariana, the whole thing about he can't have, I agree with Lala Kent, the whole thing that he can't have a party in his in their own house is pathetic. I mean, that was just a reach, but I think enough is enough. And, you know, uh, he unfortunately has done a 180. He went from a MVP to a flop. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, and I Ariana agree. Enough is Anna enough. Is, is, isn't she like lucky that she ended yes. you know that she that this happened she's actually lucky she's doing far better than she probably ever would have been had that not One, happened to her 100 percent. and she has a new boyfriend so it's like girl I mean, stop her career is just taking off you know amazingly good yep. for her you know good, good for her, her. Mm -hmm. but you don't need to keep beating tom sandoval i mean enough is enough get you know and these yeah. people are all cheaters like, I love it when James is like, oh, don't tell me about Kristen. You know, yeah, it's the same freaking thing. What are you talking about, James? You're no different. <laughs> no, that was a reach. That was 10 years ago. That was a reach. That was I a reach. mean, I don't know. I feel like he's a cheater. Why, he? It's a pot calling the kettle black or whatever that saying is, you know? Mm -hmm. 
with them people. So I just feel like I wish they would move on and and I wish they would, you know, not treat him like he's the scum of the earth. And all these people have done the same thing. Um, they just, you know, and, and it's not their battle to fight either. You know, like the other people involved. It's Ariana and Tom's battle, not theirs. Yeah, so I, I agree. It's enough. Just, enough is enough. You know, yeah. 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 They don't need to continue that uh, bad treatment of him. I think it's terrible. I would, I yeah. would love the show just to focus on... Uh, you know, just moving forward in their lives, healing and all of that stuff, that would be productive. Agreed. Go Bambina. And thank you so much, Kimberly. Thank you, Candy. Uh, uh, my You're final welcome. thoughts are, um, I just, we just got to wait and see what happens. I'm excited to see what happens on the Beverly Hills reunion coming up and with Andy and Leah. Mm, yes, yes. And thank you for your your perspective on it. It's refreshing to have like a different take. So I appreciate your thoughts on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go Chelsea. Yeah, yeah Bambina, I also was going to say thank you for chiming in. And like all different opinions and views are definitely welcome on Candy's channel. Because Amory is not my favorite, but I also want to hear like other people's perspectives on like why they like her and like give her a chance. I just... It's very hard for me right now and you know we'll see mm -hmm. uh but going forward uh we'll see i don't i did not want um dorit back next season but if we're gonna see you know a little storyline between dorit and kyle and they you know do their thing I, I guess i can watch a season and then um the leah lawsuit just i hope it gets thrown out i hope i hope both lawsuits get thrown out and you know i feel bad for andy but i do think that they, Andy does need to chill. They need a shake up. They need mm -hmm. to, I don't know, take them up or watch what happens live, but I think they do need to, um, cause it is apparent. It's kind of cringe, cringy watching him on sometimes like when he, mm -hmm. when Adriana was on there or like when NECA and Sweet Tea were on there, there's some people on there. You can just tell like he doesn't like them, but if Giselle gets on there or Kyle, he's just so like giddy and mm -hmm. you know, got his happy hat on. Yes. And then in the yes. reunion, you Ooh, know, um, you. It, when you watch Miami, like I just think that there's certain things like he, if, this, if it was a different host in that seat, they would hold the castmates accountable and hold their feet to the fire instead of kind of just like moving on, like just grazing, moving on because Andy kind of cares for them, you know, so they're not really. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I, think true. I think Andy could, I think Andy could keep Watch What Happens Live and he can be as weird as he wants to be because that would be like mm -hmm. his domain. But I think that for reunions, they need to replace him with someone who yeah. actually watches the shows and also has a more understanding about the temperature, the pulse of the collective who watches it. Because yeah. it, sometimes the questions he asks and like who sides he's on, we're like, no, 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 this is so wrong. Like this is about yeah. the collective yeah. thinking or asking or wanting to know. So I think that he should step back from hosting the reunions, get somebody in there who is fresh, who is curious, who's not biased, who holds people accountable, who doesn't have favorites, who has boundaries, yes. and who actually understands like what's going on in real time. But Watch Rappin's Live, he can keep that because like that's like his thing. It's sort of like Wendy Williams, you know, like nobody's gonna mm -hmm. tell Wendy how she's gonna be on her show. So I think when it's your little pot, that's okay. Not to facilitate or want people to be hostile, but like you can be quirky if it's your show. It's like the Daily Show with John Stewart. Like he's gonna be him, you know, Jimmy Fallon. Who's John Stewart? Who's John John, John Stewart. Oh, we'll talk. I'll tell you later about who John Stewart is. <laughs> but like, or like Jimmy Fallon, you know, with their late night shows, they're quirky. They're going to have their own thing. But I do think when it comes to reunions, we need somebody else who has their, you know, mind on the pulse or their hand on the pulse and who isn't biased and who isn't having people with so much favoritism. And he also needs to chill a bit on Watch What Happens Live. Like, be quirky, mm -hmm. but like also rein it in, girl. Like, rein it in. Okay, you go, Adam. Uh, for, firstly, I wanted to say um, we missed out on my FMK this this time, but we uh, did so, so. next time. Yes, because uh, I, I said I got to eat. I said I said I said <laughs> hungry. <laughs> but but um but okay. yes, the, 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 the two the two I sent you um in, in addition to the one we did last week are pretty juicy. So uh, next time, yeah. <laughs> but but in. in in, in, Adam, in, Adam puts me to work, you guys. He puts me to work. <laughs> uh, but in, 
in terms of in terms of the reality of things, you know, I I I I feel like I've been pretty clear when it comes to Beverly Hills how I feel, mm-hmm. but I I just want to see, you know, not that she's going to come back because maybe she'll come back in in five hundred years time, but I I want with Beverly Hills to see that organic Lisa Vanderpump Camille vibe. Yes, yeah, uh, 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 and Me too. I I I feel that you know with with um, the current cast, you know. Not that everyone has to be best friends, but I want that kind of synergy, you know, with Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. Ironically, Kyle, when Beverly Hills, when the inception of Beverly Hills happened, Kyle was actually the poorest on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess Tony <laughs> Kim was, but uh, Tony t- 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 Kim was, but Ky- Kyle, the, the, the Richard sisters weren't actually that uh, wealthy at all compared to the other cast. Uh, and it's only recently that they've, gathered this uh, plethora of wealth but I want more of that but I don't want to see anyone by at all by the likes of Diana the Berg no I mean uh, and I uh oh no and Kim and Ferga Queen's kick uh, wait one second oh. so sorry ei rule i was kicked out of the chat for a few minutes before too oh no sorry i didn't do it it must have been youtube or something sorry about that ei oh no okay um, keep going and, adam and, Ver- and virgo queen said that her phone kicked her out of the panel of know. the panel but, oh yeah um, we love you virgo queen yes. thank you for joining us sweetheart but but it but in, t- in terms of but but in in terms of that, I want to see more more of that organicness. But by all means, I don't want to see someone who thinks they have money, thinks they're entitled to do fucked up, disgusting things. AKA messed Diana the Beg. Messed up, messed up. A, a, AKA Diana the Beg. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, watch uh, your p's uh, and q's, uh, Adam, on uh, my channel. Uh, uh, and and you know, Di- Diana the Beg. That was a disaster i mean it, i already unfortunately you of this disgusting creature um because she's you know the head uh, being in london society i kind of you you of her but um, unfortunately i wish i never you of her but i guess um yes, but yes, uh, yes. but but in in terms of what i want to see in the other shows is that i want i want to see it's you know kind of something that is fun you know uh, yeah Yes. Uh, I, 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 and do you recommend that I see? Should I should I give uh, Summer House a go? Because I, I literally we never get any yeah. advertisements. We never get it over here. I've just seen it on my Hey You or something. To do you want to watch this type of thing? But but yeah, it's just give um, it a go. Give it a go and 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 see what you feel. Okay. Um. But so. But. Adam, but I gotta yes. go. I'm hungry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's 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 22 past two this way, so I must go to bed as well. <laughs> uh, but but yes, um, uh, much, much love, Burger Queen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but uh, yeah, so uh, I, I but I, I'm I'm looking <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to uh, the upcoming FMK. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's a deal. Uh, because, I'm sorry, but last time you you were so priceless when it came to Peter, you were like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, uh, whoever, whoever missed out, you need to see it. Okay, Candy was priceless that night. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, thank but, you. Uh, but but uh, uh, take care and you too. Let, and hopefully this week goes well for everyone and yes. and everyone give uh, the video a massive thumbs up. We always Yay. appreciate that. And uh, if you want and keep keep it keep it with good banter, like Candy yes. does. We always uh, do. Anyway, night. All. Good night. Shout out to my beautiful panel. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Bambina. And shout out to everybody in the chat box. Virgo Queen, EI Rule, Tay Tay the Savior, My Cozy Nest, Gloria, Chocolate Chunks. Thank you so much for being a channel member. 
Irene. Everybody, if I missed you, I apologize. Brina Bina, what is up, everybody? Amy, how are you? So everybody, I love you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Also shop our merch. We have everything down below. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies. We have journals. I just did a manifestation journal if you want one of those. And we have a lot going on. Check out my podcast, The Soft Life with Candy Washington. And it's all linked down below. I love you guys. Take care and I will see you next time. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Bye.